Oh, wait. Uh, uh, that's not 9-11. That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I just Perfect. say it now? Yeah. Cool. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Spodcast, hosted by the only podcast host responsible enough to stay more than six feet away from you, Sumetto Media. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Alex. How you doing today, buddy? Hey, I'm doing good. Solid. We're also joined by a special guest co-host today, the internet, internet historian, hey, historian. How's it going? It's going. Right, I'm looking at it's an image good. at the moment. I see there's there's a dude in the middle. I'm assuming that's Alex. Who are the two it's, dudes on the not. left and the right? <laughs> it's not Alex. It's not Alex at all. Yeah. This is my buddy Kareem, who happened, to be free, who happened to be free that day. Um... Because I needed someone to be able to take pictures of me. Oh, I see. Um, He's mentioned Kareem to me a lot. I've never met Kareem. That's not what I assume Kareem looked like. Yeah, Kareem's an interesting dude. He's thin, he's Turkish, and he looks okay in YouTuber merch, is what we've come to learn. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah, I like that shit. So, uh, I've, got a, I've got a thing for you guys here. Mm. Um, have you guys ever seen these YouTube videos before? No. This is the Wired Autocomplete oh my God. interview. So right. basically, they, they grab celebrities. So we've got uh, uh, Peter Parker here um, and uh, uh, Notorious B.I.G., I guess. I don't know these other guys. And then Zendaya, who I've seen from memes. Are we not going to see the girl? There we go. That, that person. People slobber over her, I've heard. Um, right. But basically, they take these celebrities, right? So this is... Um, uh, th they just typed in Spider-Man for this one. <laughs> but they take all the suggested autocomplete uh, things for Google, and then that becomes the interview questions, uh, which I thought was a tremendous premise. Right, uh, right. Given that I love talking about myself for you know like half hour segments. At Are a you time. also going to ignore that? That's Ned from the Spider Man movies. That's also an actor in the Spider Man. Who this guy? Yeah. Oh, oh, is he the dude on the he's bus the who's like, holy friend. shit? Are these he like are these shaved. famous people? They're all three uh, of them are famous people. <laughs> yeah. The I've dude on the right, it's got like a sort of shark fin. It's very very. He's probably, just sort of he's cuts probably right more through famous the if water. He's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dude on the right is probably more famous if you've seen the movie, which I have not, unfortunately. Yeah. Wait, are these guys all in the same movie? Yes. Oh, yeah, Spider-Man Far From Home, the one that I did not see, which you, is why I only recognize Tom you don't. Holland. You don't need an interviewer when the questions are from Google. Yeah, exactly. That's the premise. So anyway, I popped my name into here, right. and I just got why is Semento Media... Up. Exactly. I've got absolutely no incompletes. People are asking, like, what species of flounder I am, and it's just not that interesting. You know who does have a couple interesting autocomplete results, though? Alex? Is the internet historian. Oh. Damn it. I probably do. No. Just the name's generic. Just, at, yeah. No, I'm sure I'm sure somebody's searching for you, Alex. I'm sure somebody is. I promise you. I'm, I'm waiting for you, Dad. <laughs> All right. So anyway, the the premise is clear. Right. This podcast needs some higher production value, right? Yes. We we it's been me and Alex just discussing anime and internet tropes for like the better part of six hours so far. Mm -hmm. And now that we've got a nice sizable YouTube guest, we got to step it up. So I figure, why not learn from the best? Wired Magazine is clearly known for their celebrity interviews, right? Right. I mean, that's what you think of when you think Wired Magazine, right? Yes. Um. So we just go with Weren't this. They, so didn't they do electronics at one stage? Wasn't that their whole? That's the only. <laughs> that's mainly what I think people know. Why? Oh right. Yeah. Okay. That's why I, mean, I know YouTube, them. <laughs> YouTube has um their YouTube channel is completely different because, I mean, like Complex was because um, they can't compete with Linus Tech like, Tips. Yeah, exactly. Um, Complex was originally just supposed to be like hip hop music and interviews with hip hop people, but mm. then they did, um, then they did the Hot Ones interview on its own uh, first we feast, and now. You know, it's still hosted by Complex, but it's like th their main thing is doing those spicy chicken wing interviews. Wow, you should that's be an just internet historian. So much hey, shut up, all right? <laughs> I do a tiny <laughs> bit of research, and suddenly I'm the fucking internet historian. Mm. All right, so uh, if you type in... Right. Uh, is internet... Oh, wait, no. That's not going to be the easiest thing. I wonder if I get all the right... If you type in does internet historian, does it finish with have a face? Uh, most of them are, uh, what does internet historian look like? Yeah. Um, but the, the first one they typically do is who. Right. Um, and usually it'll be like, who is, uh, uh, Tom Holland. Then it'll be like, who is Tom Holland's best friend? Who is Tom Holland's, 
uh, wife and stuff like that. Right. Uh, yours is just who is internet historian, <laughs> which I think is actually who? still a good question. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, they they want to know they want to know who the old man is. Yeah. They, yeah, 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 exactly. Mm. So when they when they think who is internet historian, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> so hold on, I got to explain this. <laughs> You've got a fandom page. So, so some, go on, go on, go on, go I on. I swear there is a there are a couple of people out there who think this is real. This is a photo of Wavy Web Surf with an old age filter put over the top. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so there's a um, they oh, does it say here January. Oh no, that's when it, I, I can't quite see because of the resolution. But if it says my birthday, uh, yeah, April twentieth, nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, four twenty. Yeah, well, <laughs> so so I kept getting these emails from this website called like Famous Birthdays. So I'm not telling you my birthday. Sure. I'm not telling you my mother's maiden name. I'm not putting that shit yeah. out on the internet. So yeah, that is you, a le- that, that is a legitimate that is a legitimate like um celebrity uh. Like they do like uh, interviews and stuff with celebrities as well, and they're trying to become like a legitimate um, source for news on like, like you have famous birthdays for like celebrities, but they do like TikTokers and YouTubers yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So like, if you need to know PewDiePie's like uh, actual birthday or the actual date that he joined YouTube, they keep track of that stuff. Mm. If you check- Just so everyone knows, I don't think they're a complete scam. But go on, sorry. No, they're fine. They're fine, but it's not information that I would have put out there. So um, yeah. yeah, it's always four twenty, and then. Uh, yeah, 1989. I don't know. I can't remember. The, there was some joke with 1989. I just can't remember what it is. Like the book. Uh, there's the book. There's also that uh, song by Bowling for Soup. Oh, yeah. Stacey, Madonna, waited for Nirvana. That's 1985, you dingus. Oh, it's 85. Fuck, yeah, you're right. Shit. <laughs> uh, I like how it says nationality Kiwi, and then in parentheses it says New Zealander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if- well, it's most not, people just go with Kiwi. Yeah, it's New Zealander on the passport. Yeah. <laughs> Full name Harold, no last name, by the way. <laughs> Doctor. It should it should say Professor. What the fu- and uh, have Esquire you ever seen the subreddit the like Maps Without New Zealand? Maps Without New Zealand. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> Maps Without New Zealand. What's going on? It's, here? What's the problem? Our, our country is an afterthought. Is the problem, and so. So, well, your country isn't real, is what people have been. <laughs> that's going Australia. On about. New Zealand's real. The, Australia the latest, isn't. The latest yeah. flat article I've read, flat Earth article I've read, just says, "You know what? Fuck Australia. Australia, who? Does this count as a map without New Zealand? <laughs> this doesn't count." No, no. Keep, Dude's just got his hand keep over. Keep going. It. Keep going. I don't, know. I don't know. What's the What's the top post of all time? Well, Show like, me what you've got. The New Zealand airport doesn't have New this, Zealand. <laughs> this block of cheese. What the fuck? <laughs> That's pretty fucking accurate, too. What yeah. do we got here? New Zealand government for a page. Sorry, something's oh, missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah New Zealand. Right. Yeah. Mods asleep. Upload New Zealand. Oh, come on. How, how, do you, how do you leave that on the app? That looked like Japan, by the way. This? I mean, that's basically what New Zealand is. It's like a spicier Japan. Yeah, it's always looked like a gun to me. Like a, New Zealand? Yeah, like a rotated gun. See, here's the... The, the trigger at the back, the handle, and then it's oh, got quite yeah. a long... Oh, yeah, 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 I see. Yeah. It's like a Destiny, Destiny hand cannon. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that thing. That's how it would be. I always thought that uh, Antarctica looked like a dog pulling over a cape like Batman. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> Antarctica. I can spell. People always say that Maps? that Italy looks like fuck. a boot. But have you ever noticed that the like that big Siberian sea looks just like... Um, or the Red Sea, or I don't know what it is. The one in the middle of Europe um, looks like okay, a so big turn your sneaker. Head to the left, and like it's got the snout at the bottom there, and like the ear at the top, and then the whole bottom half is it pulling the cape? In my mind. Wait, tell me again what this is. That's yeah, wait, Antarctica. what? No, 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 no. Oh, I what see. What it's supposed it. to look yeah, like? Yeah, no, it's, it's like a, it's like a dog, and his nose is sort of. He's not really pulling a cape over. He's sort of. Well, in my mind, he's Batman. He's Bat Dog. So give me, give me. Wait, I'm not seeing it though. Okay. Which part of this is dog? And so which see part that is red cape? bit? See that little red bit? That's the tip of the nose. Red? Yeah, that little. There's like wait, that red, red writing there. Oh, this. Yeah. So look at the middle, then go down. Right. This. Yeah. Here. Oh, well, I don't know. I can't see your mouse in it. Yeah, your mouse. Oh, is fuck. Up, 
Oh, shit. So middle down. So at the edge of the actual Antarctica where there's red writing. Yeah, where there's red writing. That's oh, wait, the I snout. Guess I... And then, and then right. the air is the thing that would be naturally in, in the other direction to the, to the northwest. Yes. And then that, that's it. And then yeah, something has it. happened. Something horrific has happened to his body. I said this in the middle of a, ge- a college geography class and everyone just looked at me. <laughs> I just spouted yeah. that out. <laughs> Holy shit. Wait, I've got a story. So when was I was in, exam? I want to say, yeah, <laughs> when I was in, when I was in, uh, I think middle school, uh, uh, I was, I don't want to say bright, but I like watch more TV than other kids. So the teachers <laughs> thought I was like smarter or whatever. Yeah. Cause I would have like witty quips and would know the answers to simple questions. Like, do you guys know who Yo-Yo Ma is? And I'd be like, yeah, he's like a violinist. He's a cellist. And they'd be like, holy dingus. shit, are you rich and or knowledgeable? And it's like, nah, I was on an episode of The Simpsons, like <laughs> stuff like that. So they like recommended to my dad that I attend this like, they called it like a laureate program, which is basically like an arts and creativity thing in middle school that took place over the <laughs> so summer. So you like slumdog right? millionaired your way into a, a special class. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So it was like it was like an opt-in thing. So it's it's on it's at this like it, we've got these schools that you can only kind of get in by lottery because they can only allow like sixty students or something, and you get more individual attention by the teachers or whatever. Ooh. And they're always considered much nicer, like better for education. The equivalent of like it's not a private school, but it's it's sort of that experience. Hmm. So it's hosted at one of those schools. So you know the, the, my parents don't drive, so we we take this hour and a half walk out to this place. <laughs> sign me up to it. I end up taking the bus the rest of the time, but I get there. Bro, I cannot explain how much of an asshole these teachers were, bro. Like, they did not fuck with me at all. Like, the rest of the kids were legitimately talented. We had a we had an art thing where they wanted us to draw an old house and add as many details as we could yeah. to make it seem old, as if to teach us something about architecture uh, and or artistry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Some people were really fucking good. They had 3D-ness going on. They had shadows. They had, like, different scaling for what was farther back and what was forward. I'm doing 2D stick figure houses, right? I don't, mm. know, I don't fucking know. I, I draw a cloud up top. I put, like, little skulls on the front fence. Two kids go before me. We're, like, presenting what it is, and they're gorgeous. And I'm like, oh, I totally fucked up here. I didn't even come close to what the fuck we were supposed to do. Mm. I get up there, and I'm like, hey, so this is my old house. Um, I've got some fences up front that are kind of broken because, you know, in movies, old houses are sort of like run down or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've got this dark cloud over the house because, you know, old houses are kind of spooky. I thought like lightning would be spooky. Yeah. People in the front row gave it a little bit of a laugh and I was like, whatever, it's over. They call my fucking parents. <laughs> what? And go, your kid's not focusing. He's not taking this seriously. Bitch, this is the best <laughs> I could do. <laughs> this isn't the sort of creative I'm good at. What the fuck? Give me a camera. Your kid too dumb. <laughs> too dumb boy i hate dude i i have never i have felt stupider in my life but that did not feel that i felt so stupid for the wrongest reasons wow. in that moment, bro i hated it so much like they treated me like i was the special ed kid because i didn't know how to fucking draw like bro talk about measuring a fish on his ability to climb a tree you know what i mean imagine like being so dumb in class that you, you get in trouble with your parents no so imagine stupid. being so dumb in a, a, essentially a summer camp yeah <laughs> like they just oh my oh, god man i'm pretty sure it was free i don't think you even paid for it you just showed up and took the time out of your summer to attend these stupid little i don't what, even want to call them classes what you, we were like 13 yeah, or but something. what are you gonna do now now that you're like a grown man you could maybe like buy a whole bunch of rubik's cubes show back up to the the camp with them like all in <laughs> hand and just go like you know pretty woman that go big mistake huge <laughs> <laughs> Just show up. I've got this excellently drawn thing. They're like, congratulations, Samet. You did it at age 25. Your, your artwork's actually respectable. Congrats. You beat out little Susie. She's crying. Are you happy? And I'm like, yes. Draw a big... I'm grabbing trophies off the window. These are mine now. <laughs> big old house and permanent marker on their whiteboard. Exactly. Yeah, brilliant. You'll never forget me now. All right. So anyway, mm. this autocomplete interview. Right. Oh, yeah. The I took the time. Right. I took the time to pull up some of Internet Historian's autocomplete answers. Right. Uh, the first one is just who is the Internet Historian? Right. So obviously not any more specific than you want to be. But for anybody who God knows this isn't a demographic that's going to listen to this podcast. Mm. But for people who don't know who you are, who is the Internet Historian? Uh, well, I don't know. It's a YouTube channel, isn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, these are facts. Uh, British people be like, well, it's a YouTube channel, isn't it? 
I don't know. It's pretty, right. self, it's pretty self-explanatory name. Yeah. I, I, you got a good point. I historian there. some of the internet, and, and that's about all you need to know. There you go. I actually um, found your channel off a Reddit thread. Oh, okay. Do you remember what the Reddit thread was? Someone was just asking for, like, what are, like, some, like... I don't know if it was, shit, like, YouTube smaller channel. YouTube sh- Like, smaller YouTube channels that are, like, gold. And right. I, yeah. it was, I, found, I found two channels that I still subscribe to, which is Defunkland and then your channel. Oh, okay. I remember yeah. you telling me about Defunkland. Yeah, Defunkland's good. Uh, it was like a rabbit hole I went down. Yeah. Yeah, dang. Uh, so the, obviously there aren't anything super interesting for when internet historian or other stuff for who internet historian. But if you type in is internet historian. <laughs> right. Uh, you, you get some very interesting uh, questions that I think actually are worth maybe a bit of background. So the, so the first one. Uh, is internet historian right wing? Y- you have to have two wings to fly, so I don't even know why anybody would yeah, It's that, tough to get yeah, out of islands know. without two wings. Yeah. Uh, is internet historian a furry? You want to you wanna give a quick explanation as to why that's one of your top search? <laughs> I've got... Why that's the top auto I've got thing. absolutely Please. no idea. I mean, it must be because of that rainforest video, but... I, no? What? I mean, I've it got is. some body here, but I, I'm not that furry. <laughs> the you, the think, internet you, think right, is, you think right wing is just because of the Shia LaBeouf ones? Probably. I yeah. I also I, don't know what right wing is, so yeah. I guess I don't know. I I I like stuff on on Twitter and things that I just think, will, um, that it is funny. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, I try not to get into politics too much. I I, I to the best of my ability, I try to avoid that stuff. People just want right. to laugh at something. I yeah, mean, I don't if you just politi- watch your channel, it's pretty neutral. <laughs> Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't really... I'll try. Oh, you're going to minute. Yeah, I don't really touch on politics too much either, but I just don't know politics well enough. Like, I, I still don't know the difference between right-wing and liberal and conservative. Like, I don't actually know what that means. Right-wings uh, like, like to turn right when they fly, but left-wings like to turn left. That's what I thought, and people never tell me that's the correct answer. So I, I've yeah. continued to just live in ignorance. Well, I have to just go, you. well, I'm, I'm New Zealander and I'm Australian, so I don't care. You Americans do whatever you want. Leave. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, mm. the, the thing about furries on the internet is it's such a polarizing topic that if, if you don't hate furries, if you aren't adamant about like right, murdering an anybody advocate. who identifies as a, you're an advocate. Yeah. Right? So the, the, the fact that by nature, all of the videos that you do are very, uh, information driven, uh, neutral politically stands like you almost never have like an agenda with this is the point I'm going to make with my video it's more so telling the objective story and all the details and facts that with a story like Rain First which if you're not familiar is an excellent convention that went super super well yeah um, which you can see, which you can see documented here in the oh, failure don't, of Rain don't First play it. I hate hearing my voice I'm not I'm not gonna play it um uh you know, obviously taking an objective look at the diapers thrown around and the elevators that were smashed and the glory holes cut into the bathrooms of this convention. Right, right. Uh, people took you as a as a furry sympathizer. Um, you know, because you know there was. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't know how deep we want to get into things. Yeah, I mean, this uh, uh, I tried to take a pretty neutral tone with this one because I I figured there was a lot of negative things in here, but there was there was another video I wanted to do that. Um, was quite sympathetic to the furries actually um have, did you ever hear of, oh yeah uh, did you ever hear about the the chlorine incident that happened in a, i think it was a chicago um uh convention center so they were having some something called like midwest fur fest or something like that and <laughs> another furry convention yeah it was another chicago yeah and and someone spilt a bunch of chlorine powder i think it was and maybe it was a solution um in the stairwell jesus and they didn't know what was happening and and they thought oh, maybe this is some sort of terroristic incident and everyone's getting really freaked out and uh so people right. went to hospital and stuff um but they they never found out who Wait, it, as a concern or because chlorine powder is quite toxic or something well pretty toxic. yeah chlorine can be pretty toxic if it's uh concentrated enough or if it's mixed with other things you know like chlorine gas that it, it could have been that right, you right, know, right. Like world war one but um yeah, don't put those in the shower yeah <laughs> yeah do your best not to cl- don't clean your pennies with that one boys yeah but it's the problem is it's an unsolved mystery people don't know what the origin of the chlorine was whether it was a prank whether there's some really bad theories out there that just aren't true um like on their on right. their face like someone was trying to use chlorine to clean their fursuit it's that's it, <laughs> I, I hate hearing that one um 
because it's just so obviously wrong. But um, I mean, everybody knows chlorine doesn't get come out of fursuits. Nothing. Does. Yeah, we've, exactly. we've established this. Yeah. Nothing gets come no, out of a fursuit. War, cold water. That's the secret. <laughs> oh, all right. I found, all right. Maybe I we can think get my fursuit up. You and just have to again. comb it out. I think. Just. I mean, how do animals in real life do it? They nuzzle up. Yif, ah, yif. Okay. Yeah, they, they use the old. <laughs> Alex, you want to you want to give brush. internet historian you want to give internet historian a quick uh, rundown on the uh, resident furry that would occasionally visit our local electronic oh, shop God. that we used to work at. Yeah, go oh, on. God, this guy. Yeah, yeah, he would just he would show up every now and then. I don't remember what he. No, was no, no. Describe for. the dude. What describe in the a dude. full costume? No, no. Uh, he had ears, like little. Like, he had the ears, and he had the tail. Oh no! And then around his neck, he had a choker with like all these bells. So yeah, you always he could hear always, him coming. He would always color coordinate as well. So the ears and the tail were orange, and he wasn't in like a suit, oh, but the no. rest of his clothes were also orange and white to like reflect a fox or whatever the fuck. Oh, and yeah. nobody would talk to this dude. He would. He wouldn't typically any uh, buy anything, so it wasn't a huge deal to ignore him because he didn't typically need help. But after a while, when he's the only dude in the department and the five of us are on our phones, like somebody's got to walk up and be like, hey, man, you need any help with anything, ooh, woo? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. And this guy wasn't like a younger guy. This guy was like, you know, 40s, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yeah, 40s. Yeah. Which, I, I mean, I say that as if that's not common. If you're, if you're take, first of all, you're not, you, you want to imagine that if you're dressing up in a suit as a character, your, your mind thinks, uh, a younger adult but these suits are far from cheap yeah right any yeah, one of these fine. suits like t typically they're all custom right you're not taking the time to buy a fursuit like this off it's the not shop. a it's costume dad <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's a, a persona a fursona if you will so these guys have these things custom made because they have to have the horns that they're thinking of they have to be the color that reflects their personal you know, wolf or, or creature that they want to be. So they have them custom made, and right. these things go upwards six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars easily. Yeah, right. Well, Every not, single not one just of them. the costume, the noises they make are also. They have to come up with those too. They're not. I do not standardized. I didn't know they were that expensive. I thought they were maybe on the upper end, a couple grand. Uh, well, let's well, it make depends. Do you, want the, suit, do you want the mouth to articulate? Oh yeah, well that is that the expensive bit. Mm, yeah, that'd be well, a bit like tougher. order custom. For, so I, don't comment on my spelling. English is my second language. Custom fursuit on Etsy. This what's is your first reliable, language? right? Bengali. Do you still do you still it's speak not, Bengali? The only person I speak Bengali with is my mom because she doesn't speak very good English. Mm. As a result, I don't speak very good Bengali because I only speak with my mom. So I know how to talk about like food and how to like argue, but that's it because so, that's all my mom ever taught me, right? What's Bengali for like a woo? Uh, it, ah, man, do furries even exist in South Asia? Fuck if I know. I don't oh, think I'd know. They have to. My Bengali is very much function only. Like I speak Bengali with the sort of like thick accent that like a British person would speak English with. I know it's the same language, but it's like, oh right, right. It's it's pretty broken. Yeah. This actually doesn't seem like the head would probably be the most expensive bit, right? Yeah, the head yeah. would be the expensive bit. Yeah, yeah, they're not that. So expensive. if we wanted to. It says head only and then partial. Why is partial $150 more? What's going on here? Current wait time is six months to a full yeah, year. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds right. Yeah. You don't even get the quality work. Had a few bumps in the road with communication. Yeah. <laughs> Cuddly, adorable, and definitely sweet. Is this a partial? Oh, this must be what they look like on the inside. For our viewers at home, I'm looking at a decapitated wolf head. If someone could link us in the in the comments a good place to get a fursuit, we'll go deeper into this topic. This fursuit's got a Tide Pod, pod on, on it. it. Yeah. An off brand one too. The real ones are No, no that's a that's one. a genuine one, yeah. Look at these guys. Oh, there's a bunch of them. There's one in the mouth. There's one in the chest. Oh yeah. This dude's memeing hard. I found a good website, I think. Send it. Yeah. Uh, what do you got here? What's what are they running for? Uh like thousands. Like a thousand. Really? The full suit, though. This is just the head we're looking at at 650 What if you find, like, a used one on eBay? How much is that? I mean, I think it depends on whether or not they've taken the time to clean the cum out of it yet. Lemonbrat.com. Pre-made fursuits. Ah, but this is... Oh, here we go. Commissions. Uh, fursuit order process. Mm -hmm. So you fill oh, out a quote you. form. We kindly ask that you only fill out the quote form if you're ready to commission us. That makes sense. You don't want to waste their time. Yeah. 
if you're not ready to order a no, fursuit. Yeah. It's not the final price, but it's close. Uh, okay, wait, there's another one. Fursuit style and price guide. Here we go. Mm. Uh, heads. These, uh, these have personality to them. I'm not going to lie. No, these don't look bad. Um, I like heads, the zebra. Starting That's price. neat. Starting price, $1,250 for the head. I mean, these look real, though. These look like the ones you'd see at conventions. Yeah. Yeah, that's, really like, that's like good enough to wear at a wedding or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, only if your fursona <laughs> believes in monogamy. Right. Yeah. Wait, just, oh, okay, just go, go, go back down price. to the bottom. They had a total one. They had a total one down the very bottom. No, no, no this is just the rest of the body. Do they have so if you do the, like the, the head for 450 right. the hands for 450 so we're at about 900 bucks. Right. And then the body looks like it can range anywhere from $800 if you just want stripes up to $1,600 if you want something like this dragon fella here. Right. So, yeah, we're in the, we're in the realm of about three, four grand here. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. These guys are nuts. I like this chubby dude. Yeah. The rainbow tail's really got a lot going for him. All right, so anyway, that's mm. that's is Internet Historian a furry. Uh, we can confirm that no, uh, but God, is it expensive to be one. But he's open-minded. <laughs> yeah, who isn't? I don't um, think that's true. The other one <laughs> I've got is, uh, <clears throat> is Internet Historian Australian, which I feel like we've answered pretty well. The answer is sort of, yes. yeah, yeah, depending kinda. on whether or not you believe it exists. The other one that I saw that was sort of interesting is, is Internet Historian Alt-Shift-X? Right. I don't really understand this one, but this, I think the joke is that he and I are the same person. I think he's put that in a couple of his videos, like as a recurring joke. Yeah. I think that's what's going on. So, but he's got, he's also got a, um, if you guys can hear this, he's also got a bit of an Australian accent. I don't know if he is Australian, but obviously Americans can't tell the difference between Australian and Kiwi accents, even though I believe they are pretty particularly let, different. Let that keep playing. I just want to. Yeah, yeah. He sounds way more proper than I do though. Oh, for sure. He is, yeah, he is also giving like a legitimate analysis on a theory of Game of Thrones. So if he was ever going to sound proper, it'd be this video. Yeah, here. yeah. He's cha uh, channeling a little bit of the Tyrion Lannister there. Yeah. The beginning of this is him talking about how Euron Greyjoy was supposed to be the super sorcerer in the books and everything. Mm. And in the TV show, he's just sort of like a meme. He's Captain Jack one... Sparrow. <laughs> he's Captain Jack Sparrow if he wanted to fuck the queen, is, is Euron Greyjoy in one sentence. Yeah, exactly. Um, the last thing that we've got from the autocomplete, uh, thing that I thought was sort of interesting is it, it literally is just internet historian. And then in all caps, raid shadow legends, <laughs> nice, <laughs> which is uh, everybody asks. So like when, when you do, when you do a plug like that, obviously you try and keep as much of the freedom as you can so that it doesn't just feel like you're reading off a script. Cause that's what they want you to do. Right. Yep. Mobile game companies are always sort of, here's 500 words. We want you to fit this two minute ad read make it your own or don't we would prefer you just read this exact thing right mm. so do you do you tell them hey i'm gonna do this sort of extravagant rock concert where the raid shadow man's wife explodes in an airplane or, or do you just go hey i'm gonna do it the way i want to you guys can approve it or not like what's that yeah what's that yeah like? well yeah without without uh revealing too much of how the the sausage is made um the right uh, uh so when when we sort of go into the uh the process of uh negotiation and all that they're they're given examples of previous ads i've done so they know what to expect and then oh of course yeah. and then if it's you know if they come back and they say read this script exactly it's just like well it's that's not going to happen so the the way right. we tend to get around that is by seeking approval quite early on and Raid Shadow Legends is, uh, honestly, they're pretty good about it. That um, uh, I don't think they've ever asked for a second draft. It's like, that's been the ad, and then they've got, they haven't have gone like, oh, can you just change this or that? It's like, yeah, that's fine. They've never no. asked you to change anything just, about okay. that. They've been fine with every uh, part of it. Your wife's dead? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, Gus Johnson said a bit about this. He did a video called uh, How to Be a Good YouTuber, I Think. Mm. Um, where he talks about how bad mobile game companies are, but he, uh, this was over over a year or two ago, so I don't think Raid Shadow Legends was in the meme sphere as much. Yeah, right, right. But he was talking about one particular mobile game company that did not give a shit 
where he, he would just give them, he would mention them and he would be like, yeah, it's kind of grindy and they sort of make you pay a bunch of money to get to the last levels, but whatever, it's a mobile game. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, perfect, fine. The, the check's in the mail. Get that out as soon as you can. Thank you so much, Gus. Like they were totally fine Some with it. Some people just want that from a product. Like, uh, I'm not saying that that's what Sh- Raid Shadow Legends is. Raid Shadow Legends is a fantastic RPG, PvP, DVD. <laughs> it's got it's got console level <laughs> graphics and some great... But, but I am saying that... Um, some mobile games yeah people just want a little bit of trash to to be pressing buttons on while they're watching something else on television so they don't oh. yeah. you know they're not you don't expecting tell us. All that that's much. us yeah yeah you would not believe the amount of time me and alex have collectively spent on clash of clans in our life it's ridiculous <laughs> it's so how many hours you reckon you've dumped into clash of clans like you know what playtime runs in in steam yeah you reckon you reckon over a thousand hours yeah, it's really easy to sink a thousand hours. Holy game. shit. Yeah. I mean, you have to understand, like, Clash of Clans specifically, like, I can easily say I've been playing, I don't play anymore, but on and off, maybe five years. Wow. Like, a long fucking time. You too, Alex? I was in high school when I got it, so yeah. Yeah. God damn. That's like it's as big as my whole WoW career. Yeah. I mean, it's it's stupid how easy it is on mobile games. Like, I almost and, don't and I'm blame. I'm not even good at it. <laughs> yeah. I I'm almost trash. don't blame. I almost don't blame, uh, excuse me, like big companies that just go the, go the mobile route. Like when they did Diablo Mobile and when they did Hearthstone, I don't know if Hearthstone was originally a mobile game and then they made uh, the League of Legends Team Fight Tactics on mobile. Like everybody's got a phone as much of a meme as that is, right? Yeah. Everybody's got a phone. It's, I, I think the market's insane. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it, gets, it gets complicated. It's as long as they're not also disappointing the audience at the same time. So people really wanted... Uh, you know another Diablo, Diablo. yeah exactly for the PC yeah. and they come in and go not only are we not giving you that but we're gonna you know sour the franchise with this other thing yeah but like I, I've in some ways I feel a bit sorry for um, you know these uh, these CEOs at these big companies because they um, they're, they're starting these projects and if you're building like a PC game it might be three four five years worth of development Meanwhile, yeah, you've got sharehold, and you know the budget for it might be eighty million dollars, um, hundreds and hundreds of staff, and meanwhile you've got shareholders knocking on your door, going, "Look, um, these guys over here had a budget of about half a million dollars, a million dollars, and they're pulling in twentyfold what you are in in revenue. Why aren't you doing right. that?" Um, and then they go, "Well, you know, because we." care about our product well that's nice new ceo please <laughs> you know so right. it's yeah they're beholden to the shareholders they're uh, they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place so you gotta i suppose you got to do two things at once but you know be be develop be developing the big game and also be doing the mobile stuff but you got to communicate that hey by the way we're working on this this big thing it's coming it's coming but yeah, yeah. anyway I don't know. Yeah, that's got. I imagine every single person who's in game development, where they have like a big CEO who's just looking at profits and how much this thing's going to take in and how quickly they can get it out, yeah. is just constantly pointing them towards like Stardew Valley, made by one dude, and Minecraft that was, you know, developed with almost no money, and Terraria that was developed with almost no money. And it's like, well, if these guys can sell twenty-five million copies, thirty-five million yeah. copies over the course of two or three years, like why? Why are we waiting five years to make? cyberpunk 2077 and, and and lower risk too like um you know it might only take a year to develop and what if the game they just spent three years on and 80 million dollars is a flop what if covid19 yeah. happens yeah it's it's right. uh, yeah but but if anything that helped animal crossing what, what a, yeah that's that's yeah true. yeah true true what although um what i don't understand is why they haven't gone like the blumhouse route where um, oh yeah. Like uh, you know, the the Blumhouse sort of model is where they. Um, You're gonna need to explain that to submit because he doesn't know what that is. Oh, I don't know what anything is. I apologize. Okay, so I can give it a rundown real quick. Oh yeah, you you do it if if I'll, I'll basically Blumhouse he produce he basically produces a lot of movies, but like for ultra cheap money, and he puts out like like you know like 10, 15 movies a year. And really? Mm. He's yeah, always got Hollywood level production. He's always what got something in the cinema. It's mostly horror movies. Sometimes more on the the action side, Some, or comedy side. Sometimes they're big. Oh, he produced Get small. Out. Yeah, Get Out's the big one that you would never guess was him. But he'll take he'll take a risk on anything because he'll sink like you know two million dollars on a movie. But you know two million dollars. But then it'll much get he, like, sixty million in the box office. Right. Yeah. 
paranormal and activity so or one of the he, later ones? He started out making, um, I can't remember, he made a, a, a couple of big movies and then he, um, he made some absolute flop, I can't remember what it was, and it, it essentially ended his career because the budget was $100 million or something like that. Add another $150 million for marketing and then it ended up right. making like $50 million at the box office. I think it was called Stealth. Um, and uh, so he he decided right well I'm going to try something different um, and was I don't think Saw was Blumhouse was it no but uh, uh, pa Paranormal Activity was Blumhouse and that thing Paranormal One Activity of them. changed everything because like it was produced for dirt cheap and everyone saw it yeah yeah everyone was so spooked by just how it was like, this is like just a long YouTube video. And it's like, but wait, the drapes are moving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it was it was captivating to watch. And, you know, the budget for that was less Hell than yeah. a million dollars. And the box office must have been well over 200 million. And then yeah. um, you go, right, well, this is the way we should produce movies in the future. But I, I think that that's exactly how they should do it with games as well. Why don't they take their production team of, you know, 200 people and then try to split that into, you know, um, 50 teams of four people and then just all right you work on the next stardew valley you work on the next i don't know starbound or something. i don't know what that game actually is you work on the actually next i right. think there is an example of that because oh, uh, really? supercell who does clash of clans has like five games out yeah all simultaneously that have some tie-in together a little bit but all are separate game genres uh, for the most part they use the same uh ip so they'll have like the same characters through the games but yeah like clash of clans is like a more tactical base attack game they also have what is it boom beach beach boom beach, some, boom boom beach. beach which is like similar but ever so slightly different and then it's they have more clash royale. Mm. yeah then they have clash royale which again is just sort of it's like a card it's like a deck building auto battler tower defense sort of thing yeah they're huge no, though like, and, then they, seen, and then they have brawl stars which is like a moba yeah and they made brawl stars it's like yeah like a mobile league of legends basically with with similar characters and stuff I, I don't know why they don't try. I mean, I played this game today. It's called Draugon. It's an absolute piece of shit. It's so slow. <laughs> the most annoying characters in the world. Pretentious. Right. It, it was it was made for a budget of about two hundred thousand dollars, and one hundred and fifty thousand of it came from a grant from the government. And and <laughs> and I think they produced it in maybe a year, maybe a couple of years. But that's all it cost. Right. Two hundred thousand dollars, and that thing will have way out uh, um, made it uh, made a return. And right. so why not just release like a ton of those, all different genres, all different styles? You know, you probably get a bulk discount on on licensing and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, mm. I mean, we just need more games in general. Yeah, I remember looking through. I'm trying to find like more story driven games that would be like a good play on Twitch, since everybody's trying to spend a little bit more time uh, on Twitch with the with the virus situation mm. going on. Twitch.tv slash Internet Historian and or Sumeto Media, mm. by the way. Uh, <laughs> links will be in the description and or show notes if you're listening on Spotify for some reason. To the to the 44 people that are listening to us on Spotify, thank you for, for validating this podcast. Um, some of the stuff uh, is crazy good. Like some of the stuff that I've played that isn't, you know, like Grand Theft Auto V, mm. the stories are insane. Succubuses and nightmares and, and magical dragons, ooh la la, yeah. type of thing. I'd like to see some of these... Um you know, old things that are close to public domain brought back uh, it, into video games. And then, you know, it can be a fucking walking simulator. But something like the island of Dr. Moreau, 20,000 leagues under the sea, these sorts of things would be fucking great as, uh, oh, yeah. sort of, you know, the equivalent of a video game visual novel. Yeah. I mean, the more and more that I play them, walking simulators and games that are more story driven are like... Like, I don't really find single-player games all that satisfying anymore, but you give me a good story, like like that fucking... Um, what's that game Joseph Anderson played? The... the Oh, yes. What ha Edith Fitch? Yep. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, Oh, bro, the story in that game's fucking crazy. There's like eight or nine little subplots to that story, all about, like, people committing suicide in just one way or another, and they're all part of this one big family. Throw in the budget. Uh, just Google the budget for um, the villain of Edith Fitch. Edith Fitch. I didn't spell that right at all. Uh, Edith Fitch, what is the actual... What remains of Edith oh, Fitch? Oh, I thought it was go. the villain. Okay. That's that's Joseph's uh, uh, video title. Oh. <laughs> the title of Joseph Anderson's video is, the, is the villain of Edith Fitch, yeah. So what was the... Um, it, go down to production. What was the budget? Control F budget. Oh. Nope. 
Hmm. Uh, story, gameplay, development. Here we go. Ah, oh, so many words. Interactive experience that evokes what it feels like to have a moment of finding something beautiful yet overwhelming. It's like bumping into the girl with the big tits at a bar. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, this is just like an overview of the story. The game had been in development since 2013. It launched in 2017, didn't it? Damn. Yeah. It won Best Narrative in the Game Awards 2017. It won Game Original Adventure, Lighting Texture, in the National Academy of Video Game Trade Reviewers. Most importantly, it got its own video on Joseph Anderson's channel, which I feel is like the biggest accolade you could have. Just jump back to Google and just uh, uh, question how much it costs. And if we can't find that, we'll move on to the, the next thing. I don't want to slow you guys down too much. No, no, no. I'm it's a, it's a podcast. It's no oh, such fine. thing okay, as slowing then. us down. Given unlimited money and time, what remains of Edith Pritch probably would have never come out. Oh, what an interesting point. The making of what remains of Edith Fitch. Nah, I don't think we're going to get a budget. I'm not I'm, joining your club. <laughs> Fuck I'm, off. I've got through the first three links. It does not. No one says the exact budget. Ah, uh, okay. It says it beats out. Okay, I'm going to say that. It, I'm going to say it was less than $2 million, though. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, definitely less than $2 million. Available on eBay for $83. What? Do people not know the internet exists? Yeah, what the fuck? Waiting three oh, weeks for it to be delivered. About the past of the internet. Dude, imagine a world where Steam isn't a thing and you can't just buy a game online. There are only physical copies of it. <laughs> Games like No Man's Sky would dip down to like $5 on eBay. Internet Historian releases his video. Suddenly, everybody realizes that it's a great game to play. You could make boatloads of money reselling that shit. Hmm. Well, <laughs> to be fair, your video on it changed my whole outlook on the game because I was just part of the meme for so long and I never thought about it again. And then yeah. I watched your video and I was like, oh, crap, yeah. I'm an asshole. If you take here, actually, this is the point of sharing the screen, right? Yeah. If you take a look at No Man's Sky's uh, viewer page, almost typed in Yes Woman's Land. <laughs> yes, woman's um, yeah. And you take a the look at the title. reviews, it's still mixed. Uh, but if you take a look at them, I don't even think I need to control F this. I, I congratulated on this after your video came out, but for a solid week or two, every single one of these reviews mm. was nothing more than here because of Internet Historian. This game's much better because of Internet Historian's video. Came because of Internet Historian, this and that. Oh, that's, that's um, stubby, you guys. Making me, making me blush. This man even got, uh, there's a whole Reddit thread about it, but Sean Murray's uh, like active Twitter reactions to... Um, Everybody showing love and like he ended up watching your video too. He commented on your video, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He goes like, um, <laughs> "Don't watch past the forty-five minute mark." That yeah, you funny. told him not to watch up until the fanfic at the end of it. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I should have maybe made um, the um, uh, announcement at the end of that like a bit more obvious because a lot of people just thought I made that fan fiction. <laughs> like I was just, uh, <laughs> this is what I really think about him. So I think right, that, you did um, write the Sonic fanfic. <laughs> Nah, <laughs> fucking pyro cynical on the casting couch was choice art memes. Oh, um, oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, uh, he sent me a little DM after that. You didn't yeah. ask permission for that. <laughs> 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 oh, I couldn't get in contact with him. Um, Woo. What do you guys think of Parasite? I know we've all seen it. I feel like I haven't had a proper discussion about it outside of the hundreds of video essays I've watched. Uh, it, it was. It was good. I so I'm normally like I watch a lot of movies normally, but Alex I, is a movie I, guy. I, I, uh -huh. I didn't see this one in theaters or anything like beforehand. I just remember after the uh, Oscars, everyone was complaining online. So I'm like, well, now I have to see it. Mm. Sure. Now I have to check out if it was worthy of Best Picture. Right. Because I had seen Jojo Rabbit, and that was what my personal pick was going to be. Either I haven't way. seen. No, I haven't seen it. Well, either. I. To be fair, I don't watch movies whatsoever. I loved Parasite. Might be one of my favorite movies. I don't know what that says about me as a movie guy. Bring up Given some that images I don't watch of, a of Parasite. I got you. Well, it helps that you had to read subtitles because you're used to that. Yeah, I mean, I watch. I definitely watch more anime than I have watch movies. Not that I want to just compare this to an anime because it's a foreign film, but I mean, I don't know. I really appreciated like the cinematography of this shit. What was up with that rock? It kind of it, like it felt just a little bit unnecessary. They have um, apparently it's more uh, readily understood in Korean, Korean culture. These yeah. these uh, scholars rocks are like a legitimate thing that people collect in high society. Mm. Um, 
But the clip that I like about this is that they're given this scholar's rock and everybody realizes or sort of acknowledges that it's this. Uh, only rich people have this shit. You don't just have one of these laying around the house unless you like can appreciate that these represent like a change in rocks or what have you. But near yeah. the end, of, when their house floods, do you notice? And, and I want to talk about all the little nuances of this shit. But mm. this rock is floating in the water when the house floods. Yeah. Like it's not just laying on a thing. It's hollow. What? Where? When? Show me that. I, I, I don't that, believe I that. I didn't think about it. Uh, I don't remember that. Uh, I parasite. thought it was sitting up high on a bench. I thought so too, but I remember, I think it was fucking um, Kino. The Kino Corner did his video on Parasite, and he talks about um, the fact that the rock's floating when the house but floods. It, but at the very right. end, he puts it back in the water. He's like, oh, I've done with you. Puts it in the river, and it, it's not like it floats yeah, along but it, the river. Yeah, but it's not like floating in the river. He puts it in like shallow water, which is like, hey, I'm done with you. Go back to where you came from. You're just an ordinary rock now amongst all these other ordinary rocks. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I could be wrong, but Go, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Be... Uh, the, the, uh, going forward. So what was that scene where she just put her head in the toilet? I've never seen that before. Yeah, that wasn't in the movie. Oh, no, that's the that's the, that's the lady who hit her, got her head. She is the lady in. who hit her she's head. Yeah, but why does she have her head in the toilet? That didn't... She's throwing up. She's, she's throwing up after the concussion thing. Right, this is, right before this is when she first gets up from being knocked against the wall. That, that's uh, how I remember that. Oh, right. okay. But the, but then, but then right here. Yeah, it's floating. That's it. Yeah. It's floating. It's floating, which lets, like, one of the little things that Bon Joon Ho throws in. It's not It's not a real scholar's rock. It's hollow, which is why it's floating in the water. So this thing oh. that they're idolizing doesn't even have the substance that it should. I, because I, it's, it's, a fa it's a facade. I assumed it was just balancing on some trash. Yeah, but then you see the scene right here, and there's not, there's not like, a little table there or anything, right? But, well, that's what I thought, too. And it's like, did did they not really put this in? And is that not what you're supposed to take away from this? Or is Korean films really this subtle? Like, you know, I get lost in movie shit. Like no, that. no, hold on a minute. No, I think that's I think that's incorrect. I think it was just balancing on the table. Cause, cause, there is a so, table there. So the there's, there's a... Okay, let's say... Let's hold say on, let's, for, let's watch this from front to end. Because this, this is only about 15 seconds here. Okay. No, it floats out of the water. No. Uh, that's what I'm seeing. It's a yeah, movie. I, it's up for interpretation. <laughs> yeah, but maybe it weighs something similar to the water, so it's slight, ever so slightly buoyant. You don't have to give it much force. Maybe he just taps yeah. it with his knees. But, like, yeah, it would kind of be neat if it turned out that it was hollow and plastic, like just a cheap version, and you could see some symbolism there. But the problem with that is... Well, the guy's fucking head gets caved in with it. Yeah, I was about to say that. I just thought he does, that. but here's the thing: he doesn't die though. That is also you could, true. You could also argue that if that was a solid, thorough rock, no way in hell he survives that shot to the head twice. By the way, I don't. I don't think you'd brain damage someone with a plastic one, even if you're throwing it pretty hard. Yeah, that's true. He did end up like losing a bunch of memories. I feel the, like I'm watching the, a tennis match going back and forth. Right. <laughs> the the one scene that I love, like, so there's a lot of foreshadowing. Uh, uh, through all the all the video essays that I've gotten, this is the mm. thing that really makes this like one of my favorite pictures is almost everything is foreshadowed in one way or another. Mm. From the beginning of the show, they very, very quickly, like if you watch it a second time, it's, it's like the Dark Knight. You pick up so many, or like Get Out, you pick up so many little things that's like, oh, this is going to be mirrored or brought up again yeah. in one way or another later in the film. And my favorite one is when the dad is driving around the rich dad Right, and he's trying to secure himself jobs in the house. Right during that whole scene. Right. Um, he, he, they're at the point where they're trying to kick out the housekeeper, and he's telling him about the housekeeper, and he hands mm -hmm. him a business card and goes, "Hey, call this." And then they get their they get the mom hired as the as the housekeeper. Right. Mm. But when the rich dad is commenting on the housekeeper, he's like, "Hey, what do you think about the housekeeper?" Blah blah blah. Mm. He goes, "Oh, she's great, but she eats so much food. She literally eats for two. <laughs> My fucking." brain exploded dude yeah 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 that was pretty good because yeah, i didn't like, catch that until like my third or fourth video essay watching this thing and i was like god damn it if i was smart that'd be something i caught on my second viewing but instead it's like ugh. wait hold on no i was a little hesitant in giving that answer because wait did no didn't they mention that when they were like down in the tunnel they, they go like do, do, doesn't she say a line that essentially no Oh, uh, maybe I'm misremembering. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I think I'm misremembering. But you get you get what I mean. Uh, no, no, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, right. 
And she tries to cover it up too. She doesn't say she's stealing food from the house. She says, I buy all the food with my own money, which you then later realize is not true. She's very much stealing from the rich family yeah, just yeah, like everybody yeah, else's yeah. because they're all parasites. Alex, you got any moments like this in the film? You got a, you got a favorite point in this guy? In this one? Uh, no, the movie in general. Like a favorite scene or a favorite thing I noticed? Favorite I really, scene? Did you notice something interesting? I didn't know. I mean, I probably did if I rewatched it right now. I could point something out that I saw. Sure. Uh, one thing that I did for this that like I, I touched on, but I recommend for every movie, is I never watch movie trailers. Just never. Yes, because they've become yeah. just a shortened version of the original movie. And it just yeah. ruins my experience. Going into this with no information was one of the most enjoyable yeah. movie experiences I, I could recommend. I mm. watched this... Yeah, I, I was... So, uh, we can cut this out if you want to, but Internet Historian messaged me after watching this movie and went, yo, wouldn't it be cool if we did like a Sundance Rejects or, a, or a, like a Game of Thrones thing that we did, uh, but for Parasite. And mm. I was like, fuck it. I heard that it won an award lately. Let's go, let's go check out the movie. So yeah. I didn't know what it was. I hate horror movies. And I was under the impression that this was, at least in some sense, a horror movie. So the, the you hate horror specific- movies? It's not that I hate them. I can't do them. Jump scares fuck me up. I'm the Dude, same way. Dude, it's like the only genre of movie I watch. I get that. And I get that like horror movie because they have to have such a specific goal of like keeping you tense and in suspense and paying mm. attention to what they want you to pay attention to. They have much tighter cinematography and much tighter dialogue. Mm. Whereas other movies, they can get away with like a goofy little scene here and there. But that breaks yeah. the ambiance of a horror movie. So I get that. I totally get that. But I just can't, ever since I was young, like the first time I watched Case 39 and that fucking bitch jumps out of the oven and just like jumps, get, the fuck, the why? No, I'm going to watch The Simpsons. Why, why am I doing this to myself, right? Just never fucked with it. So yeah. the whole scene where the son's walking down with the scholar stone ready to knock out the woman or something, and, and she's still, like he sees the blood trail and the dude's creeping up behind him to choke him with the wire and drag him mm. across. I was flipping my shit, dude. Because I had no idea where this movie was going to end. I have mm. no, it's been a, like a dark comedy so far. Like, what the fuck's going on? I don't get it. Is this a scene? Is this where they jump out? Do I have to leave? Yeah, that took a hell of a turn as well. Like, I didn't, uh, I just didn't know what to expect at that point. I didn't know whether it was going to turn into like torture porn or whatever. As soon as they opened yeah. that basement, I went down there. The, movie, like, the movie went oh, hard left shit. in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I, I didn't like the ending that much, to be honest. I sort of thought mm, it was too they, happy. Well, they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they didn't know how to wrap it up. It kind of felt like, well, I guess yeah. I will go and live in the basement now. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that made sense to me. The part where he buys the house in the end, I'm like, oh, so he had the option to not be poor. <laughs> it was that <laughs> right. easy. He just decided to be rich now. Yeah, that's like that's like him dreaming of the. Also, the 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 dad hiding out and then morse coding this whole sentence every night forever like so so a he's unaware that his son's lost like all of his memories right? mm-hmm. and b his son having lost all of his memories is just yeah sometimes i like to hang out you know like way up in the fucking mountains staring back at the same house right where i can see the light in the hallway that's <laughs> got the morse code to it holy shit did that, that really did that bit even really happen what bit well, when he goes up to the mountains and looks at the Morse code, I well, believe he, that he didn't, bit he didn't lose his me- he didn't lose his memory completely, but he knew his dad was down there, and he went to check it out. Did yeah. he lose that? He didn't know his dad was down there. He didn't know. He just he, had a hunch because his dad got away. He thought, where else would he go? So he went up in the mountains to like look through his binoculars and saw the Morse code, and then he translated it. I think that could definitely be true. I think what the movie like concrete gives you is that he hangs out up on the mountains just to look at the house. Because it brings him some familiarity and he sees emptiness and then he also sees a new family come in. And then at one point he notices that the lights are still flashing and then takes the time to decipher it. At which point he learns that his dad is in fact down there. And then Mm. he has this sort of daydream of, man, I'm going to buy this fucking house and I'm going to get you out of there and we're not going to have any worries anymore. But then it clips back to him just writing this message to his dad. First of all, he writes the message back to his dad. Right? He writes back, hey, dad, I'm going to make this happen, blah, blah, How the fuck are you going to get that to him? Yeah. You can't Morse code it back to him. He's still stuck in the basement. It's simple how he gets to him. He waits 20 to 30 years, gains <laughs> buys buys the house. a ton of wealth, <laughs> buys the house. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you, man. Evidently, Takes up Bon Jun. Yeah, exactly. Evidently, Bon Jun Ho has done a number of films all sort of critiquing uh, class and wealth distribution the same way Parasite does. One of them's like, uh, in an ice theme or what have you. They're all streaming on Hulu, so I might take the time to watch the other ones. But Parasite's mm. just like the most 
refined of the bunch. The dad in Parasite, the poor dad, is mm. in all of Bong Joon Ho's uh, movies. Apparently, he's always one of the main. Yeah, characters. I've seen him in a bunch of things. I just couldn't. Is he like the Brad him. Pitt to his Quentin Tarantino? I I think in Asian culture, the only person you can compare to Brad Pitt is Jackie Chan because he's in every oh. fucking movie. I meant <laughs> and like, he's ev- I meant the director actor pair, but yeah, you're right. Uh, I, you know I don't know movies, Alex. How have you gone and done this? I know. All right, so th- clearly we understand everything there is to understand about Parasite. Yes. I need to borrow your movie brains for a bit, okay? Right. I've got a goal in mind. Me and Internet Historian have talked thoroughly about my goals once I become Bezos rich. Yes. I want to I make a Tokyo somewhere in the U.S. I want to come up with my own trading card game. But in order for a trading card game to be successful, the only successful ones you can think of are tied to an anime. Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pokemon. We don't need to talk about Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering. We only need two examples. You yeah. have to have a good anime, okay? Yes. So I want to make an anime. I want to open a film studio. Maybe I do it internet historian style. You know, we do some more simplistic animation and the story really takes over. I don't know. I'll figure mm. it out. But to have an anime, you have to have a story. So I need your help writing an anime storyline, okay? Okay. I've got some, uh, I've got some plot points here. Uh, okay. Right? Okay. Um... Listen, I'll make you, it, I, I, I've got, oh, I've got, go I've got Mad Libs for you. I've got Mad Libs for you. I've, got, okay. I've, made, I've made this very easy, okay? So in every anime, we've got a main character, okay? So question simple. Who should the main character be? Floppy hair okay, aside. Can I, oh, can I, maybe can I just put out a premise? Um, Give it to uh, me. Uh, four high schoolers in their last year of, of high school <laughs> um, embark on fun adventures in a, in a social club. But it turns out one of them has magical powers. What <laughs> follows next is an adventure like you've never seen before. Stay tuned to uh, Sumito OK Club uh, Doki 12. <laughs> Something like that. Perfect. We did it. Yes, you got it spot on. Okay, now I imagine um, that the main character is with you with like slick back hair, but it's slicked back to the side. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. I actually have a big notion against making yourself the main character of a show. Ever right. since watching a number of films where that's the case. It, here's what happens 100% of the time. In TV shows where the lead writer or the lead director is also the main character, mm-hmm. 99% of the time they have a scene where they're just getting their dick sucked by four girls in a strip club. And then they go skydiving afterwards. And, and then they win a million dollars and they have a fast race car and they beat the fastest racist car. That's not how you say that <laughs> in the city. Yeah. None of it matches the character. But the dude writing the show goes, all right, what do I want to do this week? Uh, I want to get my dick down. sucked by four girls. No I want to drive in a Lamborghini. Character. <laughs> yeah, and then it becomes the show. Not because it fits the character, but because that's what the actor wanted to do for that season. Yeah. Is they want to fucking do this and that. That's why I was so, so mad about the way Yugi Moto wrote that last season of Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Wait, what? What? <laughs> no, nothing. So I've got I've got exactly one premise for an anime, and I want you guys to I want you guys to critique this. All right, tell yeah. tell me how this works out. So it's a world where it's taken over by like organized crime, right? The government and police aren't able to do oh, anything. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Everybody uses swords. They're all descendants of like ancient samurais, and only the best samurais got to survive right because they can defend themselves with a sword right. mm-hmm. and our protagonist is the one samurai who has a gun <laughs> and, and nobody, it a, it a gun wants, sword? nobody wants to fuck with him because he also has a gun but then he bumps into the one other samurai in this world who both owns a gun and a bulletproof vest oh, and he oh, has shit. to get around the fact well so he's not pers- the only one Wait, sorry. No, he doesn't have a gun. He only has a bulletproof vest. Oh, okay. So in, in every other situation where this dude's completely weak, he's actually the perfect... First of all, what do you call the antagonist in a thing? A villain, right? Yeah. In my notes here, I wrote, who is the anti-villain? The, what? That's just a hero again. Samet, with your planning. No, it's not, but like, go on. Is, wait, yeah, what would I like that. And his, and his name is like Kevlar or something. <laughs> yeah, with a dash, Kev no, Lar. It's, yeah. Ke- it's, it's Kevin. It's Kevin Larson. Okay, Kevin Larson. There <laughs> Don't be you go. too generic. Kevin Larson. All oh. right. So everybody's a samurai. This dude's got a gun. He gets mm. into a bar fight, and suddenly the dude that he puts a gun at suddenly isn't scared of him. 
And he's like, mm. who the fuck are you not scared of me with my gun in this world that only has samurai swords? And, mm. he, and he rips his shirt open and he reveals that he is, in fact, Kevin Larson. Kevlar is his anime can the, name. Can the main character be called Rudolph uh, Tooth or Rudy Tootie? Uh, <laughs> is that Japanese what? inspired? Rudy Tootie <laughs> Point and Rudy Shooty. Tootie. Rudy Tootie Point and Shooty. It's if the dude who made walkie talkies named everything else. What would he That's call a gun? That's literally a... Uh... Oh, it's a comedian did the stand up. Someone put it in a Reddit thread. That's how I. Know oh, did it. he? Fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, well, I think we've got ninety percent of the anime. No, uh, like, the, the, the main the main character's name would be something Gun, right? Surely. It it it, it, w- it would probably be Caleb Byrne. And then he'd, Caleb he'd go like Byrne? no, like he'd go by Caleb. It'd be like he'd go by Caliber. It'd be like I, Cloud I like Bullet that. or something. Yeah, there you go. Ah, see, you're better at this than you thought you would be. We could make a legitimate anime. We need a love interest, though. We oh. need a love interest. Okay. The Mag. one person. Mag. Magzine. Mag. <laughs> <laughs> Magzine. Magzine. That's brilliant. Oh, we're good with the names. All right, so the dude's got a gun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm considering the gun his superpower. The town, the it, town is called like High Noon or something. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Now we got a fucking anime yeah. together. All right, so the dude can't just have a gun. You don't just have a superpower. You gain the superpower due to some sort of dark event that happened in your background, okay? So Mm. what happened in uh, uh, Joseph Bullitt's childhood (laughs) that led him to acquire the superpower of owning a gun? He, well, I think he has to pull it out of a stone. (laughs) (laughs) He pulls the gun out of a stone. There's a revolver and some bullets stuck in a stone, and he was the only person to be able to pull it out of the stone. Yeah, that's that's the classic trope. Holy shit! Maybe I maybe. think he has to stumble upon the door to hell. <laughs> maybe what? What do you got here? Oh, I was gonna say. Well, maybe it's like yeah. So it's like Excalibur from the stone, and everyone's <laughs> using all of this strength. Oh, pull, pull, pull! But he's the one guy who's like, what if I? squeeze the trigger then pull oh that's, and that's great how, that's how he gets it out right like how you get the key out of like an old chevy you have to push yeah. it in before turn. <laughs> no he, he does a ready player one it's like a chinese finger trap where you push first and then right pull. <laughs> where like everyone all the way to pull no one pushed first but, oh but where does he get the bullets if everybody the bullets has are also in the stone <laughs> they're also in the well, so he they, has to we have pieces a, of the stone I we think have it a, should be a separate side quest to forge we, bullets. No, no, no. We have we have seven books. The first one he gets the gun. The next six he gets the bullets for the <gasps> for the six oh, shooter. I've got it. He's so he carries, um, he carries a bullet on a necklace as well, and he wears that round his neck. And engraved uh, in that bullet is his own name. And he knows that one day he will be defeated, and it, and he will he will die to that bullet with his name on it. Ooh, interesting. Oh, and then like in the first book, that necklace is like gifted to him by his parents who were killed by samurais with guns that have been extinct, but he's the last one. And then he gets his necklace stolen. And then the whole quest is him getting back that bullet necklace. And then maybe the big plot twist at the end is that it's actually used against him by mm, Kevlar. perhaps there's another dude. Kevlar. Kevlar, Kevlar gets a gun. Kevlar grabs his gun. Oh, I got to be taking notes, man. I think that, what was I going to say? I think, um. Oh crap! Oh, I blinked heavy. I'll I'll think of it. Don't worry um, about it. So what what happens then in season two? There's a guy called like oh, automatic no, no. I or think, something. I think oh. when he first <laughs> finds the gun, he has to have no idea what it is. So the first person he kills with the gun, he just blunt forces them. Oh <laughs> yeah, he's got no idea how he's a been gun. He's using it he's, as a sword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's holding it like a sword, and he tries to whack him with it, and it goes off. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that that's, that's that's way better than what I thought. <laughs> yeah, um, it's okay. like a Jackie Chan moment where it's like almost a little comical where he, like he hits someone, the gun just goes off, and everyone just starts to look. It's just like yeah. at it, like what the hell just happened? Yeah, no, but nobody understands the power of the gun. They're just like, what the fuck kind of sword is that? It blows people's <laughs> brains out. Ah, uh, this went way better is than there, I thought it would. Holy is there shit. a trading card game based on this? <laughs> well, you <laughs> see, we're talking on. we're talking about the range build right now. Most people use the tank build with the sword. Shut up, Tier Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I've got I've got a premise that I stole from Jack's films here. Uh, right. But it, uh, how 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 in tune would you say you are with anime? How many animes have you watched? Have you watched oh. the classics? Is anime a thing on your radar at all? 
Um, is it popular I, in Australia? I, I only watch like super obscure things, like like Death Note, and I've seen a little <laughs> bit of this this show. You might have heard of it. It's called like Attack on Titan. Um, <laughs> and other than that, I haven't really seen anything. Wow, really obscure stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I've got this premise that I stole from Jack's films, which mm. is basically. Um, I wanted Alex to do this to me because he's watched way more animes, but it's basically I show you like the movie poster for an anime and you got to oh. guess what the protagonist's superpower End or story. gimmick is. Mm. I know yeah. the video. So uh, I guess we got we to gotta go with something that... Have you seen Naruto? Uh, I know of it. I haven't watched oh. it. So oh, it yeah. doesn't work. You have legitimately watched Death Note and Attack on Titan though, yeah? Yes, I've seen those two. Bring up, okay. br bring up Mar. Wait, wait, hold on. Have you seen Evangelion? No. I know of All it. Right, so, I know the music. Uh, you know the premise? No. All right, here's a movie poster. Right. It's about so this, four high school teens in their last year. <laughs> yeah. You, you would, well, here's the thing. See, see how close you can get to the, act, to the actual thing. Here's a movie poster. Here's main characters. Right. If you had to guess, what is this anime about? Uh, it is, well, it's set in the future. Um, the I guy at the back has a, some sort of death note. Um, the woman, <laughs> okay, the women at the front, right, they, I think they drive mech suits. Yes! Yeah. You got it! Yeah. That, um, that is, that is all I needed you to say for me pirates? to consider you getting that. So they, so this is set in the, in the future year of 2020. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this anime is from 1994. <laughs> Have you seen that clip from, um, uh, what is it, Harvey Birdman? No. Birdman set in future. Oh, I love this fucking meme. Oh, I've seen this show, yeah. Oh, uh, the meme is like, yeah, he bumps in. Here it is. You guys are from Florida? No, we're from the future. Yeah, the 21st century, the magnificent year of 2002. He looks at the calendar, it's 2004. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that shit, dude. Anyway, yeah. Um, this anime is from 1994. It recently got re-put onto Netflix, and it has put me in oh. the biggest depressive episode of my life after watching it. Why? So these guys, because these guys are all traumatically afflicted children in one way or another. Their parents were murdered, killed, or super distant to them. And oh, they drive okay. these, they drive these, uh, what they call avas, mm. in order to fight giant monsters called angels. There's this whole biblical backstory to it. Right. But what they don't know is that these mechs, quote unquote, are actually living angels, the monsters that have been attacking oh, them. Oh my God. Um, that have been infused with the souls of their mothers. Uh, and that's why only oh, like these Yu -Gi -Oh. specific people, yeah, yeah, only these specific people can, <laughs> like Yu-Gi-Oh, <laughs> can pilot <laughs> oh, these no. mechs. Oh, oh wait, fuck. B bring up Zatch Bell. I Zatch hear, Bell. Because that's a, you would never. No, never. no, 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 no. You did, I mean, he got, he got Evangelion pretty on point, dude. Okay. I trust I like this, this guy. Quiz. This is the video yeah, game. Yeah, this is good. Okay. Uh, you want to guess this one as well? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, take, uh, wait, wait, you, you pick here, Alex. What would be a good, here. This, this be, has a, this has a bunch of characters in it. I this feel is, like the, that box set one was better, but yeah, this one works too. Box set? The that one, game? The this one? Amazon one? That Amazon one that you had up that like. Oh, am I going to remember just like, what I just clicked? Like the first, just click the first one. That one works. This one? Yeah. All right. Okay. So looking at this. You might, I zoom in? Do you want your email addresses up there? It's fine. I don't it's get fine? any okay. sponsorships anyway. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, for the record, I don't, I don't mm. think I know either. This is, this is holy Alex. But what do you think this one is? Okay. It's got, it's got an Ace Attorney vibe to it, but I know okay. that they're fighting because I've, I've seen, I saw some images on the way in of some fighting. Ace Attorney, the, the lawyer simulator, right? We're yeah. With a courtroom anime here. Mm -hmm. um, it's got those kind of vibes to it. They look like similar characters in some ways, that dude in blue. Um, yeah, I, he looks like a courtroom guy. I don't know what's up with that duck. There's, <laughs> there's a horse on the right as well and a bunny the bunny seems like an outfit though so i assume the mm -hmm. duck thing is also an outfit actually in fact it looks like a pokeball there on his shirt so he's they're just like fans of stuff yeah, um right. uh, you can, i'm gonna say I, uh, um uh oh, shit something about like um they can become like older and younger you're 100 percent correct 
Woo! What? No, he's not. He's completely oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You were you were because I was just you assuming that you thought I was cheating. Yeah, what it, you were on the right track with with the Pokeball uh, thing that you had on him, though. You're much closer than you think you are, I think. So it's not a costume. That's just how that those characters look for some reason. Don't know why. Oh right, okay. And basically, these little kids are like little Pokemon, basically. But each of these bigger people, they get one, and like they have like a spell book of attacks they can run, and they oh, have to like okay. fight each other. So you know so how they like say people that Pokemon mon. is basically just <laughs> people yeah. mon. Yeah, all right. Zach, it's like people it's like, Mon Digi- Bell. it's like Digimon actually, but it's mm. like way lamer. Somehow. Yeah, you know, you know how they say Pokemon is basically just dog fighting, but with misses. So this is just like people fighting. Mm. But this they is, get balls Yeah, all right. How many so kids how- could you fight? <laughs> oh, That's I don't a good question. Do all right, listen. We've gone through some of the history. All right, listen. We are aiming to be the best podcast in the world, so I guess I got to ask this, internet historian. Yeah. I, I I think everybody does this, and maybe it's a it's a joke. But I think I first heard this on the Gus and Eddie podcast. Shout out to Gus and Eddie. Right. Um, how many third graders do you think you could take in a fight? How old is a third grader? Like uh, eight. Something yeah. like that. So, yeah, eight year olds, and we're talking, like, uh, I don't I don't want to say kill, but like incapacitate. Okay. How many? Reckon reckon you got to take on let's say ten at a time. How many think you could take on before you get ten at a time? Yeah, like you're not just one v one in third grade. Do they, do they have get tired. Do they have weapons? Yeah. Um, no. You okay. you are as physically fit as you are. They are as physically fit as they are. Yeah, no no linebacker third graders. An average third grader. Can they coordinate? Uh, they're third graders. So as much <laughs> as a third grader could. Okay. I think third graders could do all right. They understand the rules of like sports and stuff. Um, I reckon if you know they could go in waves. Um, yeah. That's tough. I don't think I could make it through more than two rounds of ten. Because, but, so, but twenty third graders is your answer then? I think you, you rec- so. Well, yeah. Like I think what would happen is I could probably take the f- the first couple down pretty easily. But yeah, maybe I'd get. But the problem with that is it doesn't seem like they could really injure me. That's the idea. It's more so long overwhelming as you're not getting over- until I like, get tired. Exactly. The, 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 I no, think the premise is that they're so young, it really just... If there's 10 of them, they could be get. pulling at your hair. They could be kicking you in the nuts. I think there would be a point pretty quickly where I would want to relent. I don't know about them. Like, they're supposed to kill me, right? Incapacitate you. So the point where you wouldn't be able to fight back, I guess. Because I, I think they that kill would happen pretty quick. Day. I think that would happen pretty quick. Uh, I think I could get through the first round... And then by the second one, I'd be a little bit more tired. And then um, I reckon they could really, yeah, I, I reckon they could cause you some strife. I've given this a lot of thought. Mm-hmm. Right, Alex, I've, please, please do tell. <laughs> step one, okay, I'm picking out the, the, the skinniest, lightest kid, okay? That kid, sure. I'm singling that kid out. I'm going to grab that kid by the feet. That kid is now my weapon. I'm no swinging way. Him that, around. That, that kid I'm would still be like freely. 25 kilos. There's no way. I, no, it's but like I'm talking about like in a concrete. circle, like a top. You know, I'm I'm whipping. That's that's my <laughs> whole just, strategy. You're just spinning a kid around in a circle. It's in Beyblade a, in, in a perfect defense move against it. Do, do your answers change if it's one v one and there's an unlimited number of them? Yeah. Oh, they never they never beat me. You reckon how many you reckon you could take out if they just came one v one and then to the point where the kid can't fight back well, they, they move on to the next kid then the question changes it's more like well how far can you run without getting tired well i can probably run about 5k something like that so are you yeah. running away from the kid I thought no you're... but but it's the equivalent it's st- right it's or like boxing question. yeah it's like a boxing at the gym or whatever how long how long can you go at the punching bag until you're until you're too right tired right yeah yeah, that, yeah that's well what I you know probably about five minutes something like that and then if what one kid's running at me every 10 seconds so what's that six uh, six to a minute? I can't remember what my original premise was. Uh, five well, minutes, six, six to a minute, so thirty. I think I could. So thirty three rounds of ten. Halfway halfway through wave three, yeah, not bad. You gotta just go. You know, you gotta take them one at a time, but you gotta kind of get through them fast. You know, you can't break your stride. You just gotta get into a rhythm. You know, <laughs> this is, no, after a while, them in be, the jaw over and over again. You'd be Step breaking one, rip- your fist after a while. Like yeah. you need to. Yeah. That's that's what I thought the critical point would be. It, it's more of a question of how many times could you punch somebody in the jaw before you can no longer continue to punch somebody in the jaw. 
I'm mm. kind of down to you guys' strategy because I think you need to utilize like the, the the ground game. I know you gotta you gotta like sweep the leg because once the kid's on the ground, he's lost all advantage. You know. Sure. You need to be able to pin this kid. So uh, I step kid, one. I'm sweeping the leg. Kids are wily. Type in like fighting eight year old. I reckon they. Should... No. <laughs> Type... I I have. I've seen like my little cousins fall down a flight of stairs and be just fine. I'm not, I don't think a kid's going mm. out of the fight just because you swept the leg. No, you sweep the leg, but you got to capitalize fast. Like stomp saying. on their head, you mean? <laughs> like wait, you I'm mean... getting actual 10-year-old kickbox. Wait a second. Oh, no, yeah, this changes you, dude. everything. Dude, we're f- wait, 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 wait. What's the chance you bump into one of these guys, though? Um, You reckon you could take one of these? One I, of these I, 10-year-olds? I, think, I reckon you'd I cause think your problems. Sh- He'd cause us problems, but I think solely because of our weight advantage, he, he hmm. there's no way he could take us. You'd definitely win, not... but after about the third or fourth of those, you'd kind of like... Oh. Yeah, you're probably not oh, going yeah. through anywhere Stop. near as many of these 10th graders or, or 10-year-olds, right? Look mm-hmm. up this kid's name. How much does he bench? <laughs> oh, I think I think a lot, actually. Wait, wait, This might be in this video. Nah, this is a different kid. There's a different kid who's like about his age, but like a bodybuilder, and he benches a fuck ton. Could he bench oh. me? <laughs> I mean... Yeah. I, I I think his bench was something like two hundred twenty five pounds. Like it's a he lot. can bench he can oh, bench shit. me. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> Holy fuck! Oh, I need All to put right, that, what, what need to put that weight back on so I can take more of these kids. You gotta. Uh, that's probably about it. Um, okay, so I had a. Um, mm-hmm. I've got another thing. So I wanted to really hone in on Australia a little bit because the culture is so different there. I have bugged you a number of times about how you can survive in a place where there's just so many things trying to kill you. That's been a meme forever. Yeah, Australia is nothing but I'm scorpions and tarantulas. Right now, I, in the night, I've been bitten by some sort of bug and my pinky finger has like swollen up. And oh, it's no. it's so itchy. I've got no idea what happened. But yeah, I'm like what? scratching that right now as we speak. It's driving me to that's distraction. My, that's my nightmare. <laughs> is that a common occurrence? Uh, not like, to you specifically, but in general. Is that just... It, it's probably like, like that the third time it's happened this year. That's pretty frequent. That's so frequent. Yeah, it might it might have even just been an ant or something, uh, but I've just had some sort of reaction to it. But yeah, there's like there's like two dots on either side of my finger. And right, like the thing's swelling up. I feel like you could tell if it was an an, an ant just by how far apart those dots are. Right, ants' mandibles don't get all well. Uh, it looks like fucking yeah, big. two Step. two separate bites I think rather than one. Step one, get your uh, get your get your like ruler out. You know, measure it for us. <laughs> These guys scare yeah. the fuck out of me. I don't yeah. know if like can you just bump into a kangaroo, like just walking down the street? Uh yeah, wall- wallabies are super common. Um, I mean, you know, not near the city, but in the suburbs, you'll find them. Um, historian's, uh, dad lives on a property that's just filled with the things. Whoa. Do they ever become problematic? Are they as aggressive as they seem in these pictures where they're flexing? (laughs) Well, that's a massive (laughs) kangaroo and that's a male. Um, uh, You can tell by the size of its cock. Yeah. (laughs) It's typically how you tell apart the males. Its neck females. is red. Was it like head deep into the thing it just killed? Uh, yeah, man. Somebody somebody decided to have the same premise, but instead of eighth graders, it was kangaroos, and he tried to do a rear naked choke, and it just did not work out. <laughs> this, is, this is a picture right before moments of death, by the way. Famous last words. Famous last words. I could take that wallaby. <laughs> did not work out. Yeah, the, One of the, the first results for a kangaroo is buff, by the way. This is an autocomplete. <laughs> Look at this guy. This is a model of a kangaroo. That's an absolute unit. Yeah, too, that's why they make fantastic meat. Because it's just yeah? like oh, it's such high protein. I got my dog kangaroo treats once. Mm. Yeah, Were they just nice. shaped like kangaroos? No, they yeah. apparently... They, yeah, I just saw... I was like... I was, right? there to get, <laughs> I was there to get him treats and it said kangaroo meat. And I was like, what? <laughs> no. Mm. I, I had to, it's like one of those things where you have to try... You have to buy it. I mean, I didn't try it, obviously. I'm not a dog. One of my favorite subreddits is, or I guess, no, it's a subreddit, is uh, Scottish People Twitter. Right. Uh, which I love. If you guys don't know, Scottish People Twitter on Reddit is just a collection of tweets from people who tweet uh, in what they call Scots, which is they write out the tweet the way that they would sort of talk. So you can read these things out loud and they'll have like Scottish slang. And it's so much fun because you read it the way it's written and then you sound like you're speaking in a Scottish accent. Right. Okay. So hold on. Sh- Apparently, a coronavirus symptom is having no taste. Uh, thoughts go out to all the cunts who wear Yeezys. Then I don't yeah. sound Scottish. That's a, that's a soft one though. But they've yeah. got they've got some proper you, ones. You give it a try, Samito. 
My pals think living in Scotland is all beautiful rolling hills and friendly patter, when in reality it's a junkin shouting, you going for a shite hen at me because I'm carrying a 16 roll pack of toilet roll. <laughs> Do American McDonald's have bouncers too, or are we just animal? Okay, some of them are not completely Scottish. They're just Have you looked up the, the pronunciation of Irish names? Like some of the hard Irish names to say? We'll take a look at it, but I, I saw this. They call Andrew McDonald's well. Mackies, which Mackies. is my favorite thing. So I what decided are, that... Mm. Sorry, go on. No, 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 go on. So I decided that what might be interesting to take a look at would be Australian people Twitter. Mm. Is that so a thing? So I, I pulled it up and I found the subreddit, Aussie people Twitter on Reddit, and there yes. are exactly two posts. <laughs> <laughs> Total. It sounds about right, yeah. The first one's just a bit of patter about Americans and school shootings. We'll skip that one. But I found this one, which is the other one, which is, well, fuck me dead. Where the fuck am I standing there, cunt? Which is, if you think you've been to Australia before, you're terribly wrong. Flat Earther's latest viral conspiracy claims that Australia isn't real. <laughs> and I just don't understand. I understand memes. I feel like I do. But then I see shit like this, which is like, yo, man, Australia is not real. And it's like, What? Where did you even get this? If you've been to Australia before, you've been terribly wrong. Have you been to Australia? Have you left New Zealand and visited the main coast? <laughs> it's not like it's... You haven't. It's not like, it's the not answer like is you haven't because it's not real. Is New Zealand the Hawaii to the U.S. to you? Like, it's just like an island yeah, out it's, there? It's like, yeah. yeah, it's like the Canada to... Yeah, I suppose Hawaii is a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is like, In yeah, my mind, it's like a cold New, Hawaii. Zealand, New Zealand is the Madagascar. To, to Australia, the Africa. To Africa. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Um, fuck. And, and the movie tie-in is The Hobbit. <laughs> I can't... You gotta stop doing movie tie-ins, man. I just don't get them. <laughs> That's what... It, the Hobbit and uh, All the Lord of the Rings were filmed in New Zealand. Ah, yes. Mm. It's That's the, big, it's the biggest part of their tourist industry. <laughs> oh, God. They wouldn't shut up about it. It's one of the main reasons I left. You it's, gave me... um. You gave me a bit of a tidbit that Australia's got like very big um, like movie tax breaks or something. Like it's encouraged for you to shoot yes. movies out in Australia. Yeah, they're desperate for a film industry. Please, anyone, come film a movie here. Yeah. Which I feel like might open up the doors for this anime idea I've got. Australian anime, American mm. made, Japanese inspired. Think make a pilot. Be, make a pilot. Do a gun dumb. Do I dumb? <laughs> gun dumb it. but spelled gun <laughs> spelled it's i hate it two words all right so it's because so that uh, because that australian people twitter was such a dead end i went out of my way to find the cnn travel article from a couple years ago 33 phrases to help you talk like an aussie right so i want i want you to tell me how well i'd get along by saying stuff like fair go mate fair suck off the sauce bottle fair crack of the whip that's not real but what do right. any of those mean right hold on a minute without now, reading this what does fair go mate mean? Fair go mate is like saying, yeah, fair enough. Um, fair suck of the sauce bottle is not a phrase used in Australia. It's <laughs> nonsense. It's fair shake of the sauce bottle. So Fair's it's like, it's like reference on, to like, oh yeah, okay, you've you've had your turn at a at a thing, and it either you know came out well or or badly, and that is what it is. Fair enough. And fair right. crap, fair crack of the whip, same thing. I think that. Fair it's go, probably, mate, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fair go, mate. Yeah, it's that's all taken from, except for the sauce bottle one. <laughs> no one's sucking on a sauce bottle. Um, it says fair suck was coined by struggling stuff. Australian families who shared droppings of tomato sauce to that's flavor just, their meat. I don't know why CNN is peddling this propaganda. No <laughs> one says fair suck of the sauce bottle. No, people say go, fair I'm... shake of the sauce bottle all the time. But... I'm like, going to go into some deep lore and find what when Ned Kelly once said, <laughs> fair suck. <laughs> oh, yeah, former prime minister, Ned Kelly. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> have a Captain Cook. I think that went over his head. Oh, I'm, I'm not even going to address it. I have no fucking idea what you guys are talking about. Uh, I have never. Uh, is that Cockney rhyming slam? A slam? A look or a brief inspection. Have a Captain Cook. Nah, that's British and, slang. And that's 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 not used here in Australia. The apparent honor of the first Brit to map Eastern Australia, Captain James Cook. So that's not even real. So, Sian, I'm so happy you're here because I would have looked like a dumbass visiting Australia. Yeah, and, we, we would have told you to my leave. Translator. Please leave. <laughs> We'd say. What's the John Dory? 
This is, sounds what? like another. Um... John Dory is a fish found in the Sydney. Oh Harbor. yeah, yeah. Okay. It, I thought with it was lemon more and pepper, deep fried. It also rhymes with story. This feels like like moms telling you what like text speak was like like yeah. what LOL stands L- LOL for. Means lots of love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. This okay. This was Cockney rhyming slang. Yeah. No. This this isn't a thing. What's the John Dory? No. Nobody says that. A few stubby short of a six pack. A few sandwiches short of a picnic. I feel like this is universal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Few few tools short of a tool shed. A few crayons yeah. short of a pack. Yeah, it's all it's all. The a same. six pack has evolved to mean anyone who fits who fit abdomen. What? <laughs> but long ago, a six pack and still is a group of beer. Who the fuck thinks of a of your abs? My mind goes right to beer. What? That's where mine goes. Well. Uh. Also, how are you a few abs short of a six pack? That's not a fucking thing. You don't have five abs and go, I got to work out some more. You can get them one at a time. I think the point is you can have one big ab. Yeah. You know what I mean? (laughs) All right. I've got a visual idea for our protagonist in the anime. He's going to have one big ab. No, he's got, he has to have an odd number. It's got to be three. Yeah. Three abs. (laughs) And yeah. Tell him he's dreaming. That also seems universal. Dog's breakfast. What's that one? Uh, it's like a like to make a dog's breakfast of something like a big fucking mess. Messy, but doesn't refer to food. So, like, you look at a Jackson Pollock painting and you go, "Oh, that's a dog's breakfast of a painting." Like that? It's, no, it's more like, "Oh, you tried to do something and you made a fucking mess of it." Like, oh, um, like his YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen my fast food videos? By the way, that fits my niche, doesn't it? <laughs> Wrap your laughing gear around that. <laughs> uh, I, I'm maybe that exists in some some niche, but what does that mean to just eat something? Uh, while some suggest you can laugh on the inside, your main laughing gear is your mouth. So when you wrap your laughing yeah, you gear it. around something, you eat it. Yeah, what? Right. Oh, I can see this happen. You're fucking. Who's an Australian YouTuber? I would know. Not not internet historian, but somebody who does like food maybe. That's too specific. But mm. they they'd like show you a burger and like the cheese would be melting. And they'd be like, oh look at that, mate. Oh wrap your laughing gear around that. That's a that's okay, a cheesy the, burger here's, right there. Here's the here's the truth. We don't use any of this stuff. That's um, anything that's not actually shortening the phrase. Yeah. We wouldn't use. Right. We is we are. It's hot. We're tired. We're lazy, and we talk through. Our, that's why we talk through our nose. <laughs> And so, oh so if it sounds no, keep like going. no, say the rest, say the rest, say the rest, do the rest that, with the name. You, you say that's not a knife. I, <laughs> I am not your, I am not your, uh, jukebox. I'm not a, some dancing <laughs> monkey for your you entertainment. Gotta, but l- l- yeah. if, if it's like, we can't even bother, be bothered saying the word sandwich. So we, yeah, sanger. And it's like, <laughs> oh, if we, wait, wait, wait. If we can't I, be yeah, bothered saying, this. yeah, if we can't be bothered saying sandwich, there's no chance that we're going, scroll back up. What was that stupid one? <laughs> a few stubby shorts Ever, of a six pack? Yeah, having a Captain Cook. We're not doing that. <laughs> we're just going, what? Like that. <laughs> what? Oh, that's true. I guess you wouldn't be able to write an entire fucking article. I mean, these people are no. cranking out 20 of these a day, right? Yep. No, yep. Get, find their like name. Their career depends on it. Fucking Matt Cooney. Corny. This article's corny. Oh, Wait, scroll, keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling down. Come on. I I, I, there's 33 of these. I mean, I'm, I'm down to go as long pull, as you guys Pull the go. wool over that, your eyes. Yeah, but that's not an Australian saying. Throwing shimp on the barbie. <laughs> Bastards? We, don't, we mostly don't put shrimp on the barbie. As, as far as I always understood, there's a difference between shrimp and prawns. You get those. Yeah. Like like prawns are the big ones, and shrimp are the small ones. Um, they usually come in like a bag, and they're all deshelled and such. Um, yeah. You're certainly not throwing shrimp on the barbie because it'll just fall nope. between the grating. But you, I guess you could throw prawns on the barbie, but you're mostly not doing that. You th- you're telling me they don't end up just like this? No, you put a, a steak <laughs> on the barbie. Just one. <laughs> just yeah, one, just yeah. One. Look, it's not even on. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is a green screen effect they threw over top. They're not actually cooking. This is there done. Is, no, no, there it's, is, there, it, they've, they've actually reversed the shot. He's behind bars. Oh, you guys have <laughs> shrimp prisons down there. <laughs> yeah, they're... I didn't well, know it, it is a prison. <laughs> Yeah, it's a prison colony. Everyone's in prison. Yeah. There you go. Um, also, the, what bastards? 
often used to refer to the British. <laughs> yeah, this is y- Yobo and Oka. I- yeah, o- Oka, I suppose that just means Australian. Put a sock in it. That's not Australian. Throw no. a shrimp on the barbie. Yeah, that's maybe. that's Outback Steakhouse. That's not actually Australian. Do Wait, the Harry? You me never bl- heard of that. Do you guys Harry? have blooming onions there, just growing out in the wild? Do I have what? Blooming onions. <laughs> <laughs> Do you even know what that is? <laughs> no. The any a, any American will think that's Australian cuisine because yeah. out, it's the best thing on the menu at Outback so Steakhouse. A bloomin' onion is they chop off the head of an onion, like the top 30% of an onion, and they let it sort of flour mm-hmm. out, and then they oh, bread okay. it and deep fry it, and they call it a bloomin' onion at uh, Outback Steakhouse, the, the steak place here in America. I, I do addictive. that with roasts, but I, I wouldn't deep fry it. Yeah, you, just top the, yeah. you cut the top off and leave the rest, and it all just starts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. To be fair, that's closer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, Uh, Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Yeah, we we say that sort of thing. Not Uh, pissing on someone when they're on fire. That's not even kind of Australian. I wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. That's just the thing. That's that's Mm. just a saying. Crikey, bloimey. Euphemisms used to communicate amazement or surprise. (laughs) Crikey, yeah, bloimey is is the UK one Do these... Do these ever come out of you without you thinking about it? Do you ever no. have a gut reaction? Blimey, ever? I, I would be really shocked if that came out of my mouth. I go, oh, sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. I apologize. And then I would have Is to that... leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> Blokes and Sheilas. That's one. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no one really says Sheilas anymore. It's been a while since I've even heard the word or read the word Sheila. Mm. On, on your bike, tell your story walking. What? Yeah, on your bike is a yeah is a, a, a well said one. It's like what's that? Uh, it's like yeah yeah yeah. I, I, this is all bullshit. Yeah, whatever. Oh, well, like, like get often, out often it's for like a bad excuse. Uh, yeah, when you tell yeah. someone to get on your bike, even if they're trying to excuse themselves with well, I'm not going to try and say it. You bid them to tell your story walking. Mm. <laughs> We're not going to use this in real life. Who cares? Let's move on. Yeah. Lobster, pineapple, gray nurse. Australians don't barter with lobsters and pineapples, but most have had at least one friend ring them up or hit them at the pub to lend a lobster or a pineapple. Nope. The $20 note being a sparkling red lobster and the $50 nope. note being bright yellow pineapple lends itself to the phrase. Not at all? I would be amazed if this wasn't just made up by the author. <laughs> the $100 <laughs> note, a blue gray, has now been named after a shark, the gray nurse. Is that true, at least? The $100 note is green, I thought. This article is from 2017. Has nope. that been recent? No, they, they, they haven't changed the $100 note since then. Um, what is this guy on about? The, the, the $50 note is yellow. Has he got right. that right? I can't yeah, really read it. Yeah, the $50 the note being bright pineapple yellow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but nobody calls it's it a pineapple. That's that's stupid. People would just go if someone says, "Yeah, give me a lobster," you'd go, "Excuse me, <laughs> yeah, me give a me a, one pineapple, please." Sorry, <laughs> what? what? What do you want? Um, Smoko, yeah, very common. Garbo, not so much. Bolo, yeah. Bottolo, absolutely. Arvo, absolutely. For notes. They're all, like fives and they're all just stuff? shortening. So smoke overs go for a smoke. I don't know what garbo means. I've heard bolo. I don't really know what that means. I suppose. Oh, you're reading this next one. Sorry. Yeah. An o added to the suffix of any word. Yep. It can shorten. This is a thing I've seen. This mm. has been a meme that if you want to make something sound like a bit of Aussie slang, you chop off the end of it and add the word O. Yep. So if you want to say that you're going, uh, you're going, yeah, you're going for a smoke. You just go smoke O. Yeah. Cause your, your full name is like. Uh, Samuto. <laughs> right. Fuck! I couldn't think of what a longer version of Samuto was. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, whatever. You get the you get. The point. Someone else assembled yeah. that joke. Thank you. Uh, it- somebody had a. I had a. I had a meme that was like the the suffix ito in Spanish means like a small version of something. Like you say uh, ito at the end of like an Enriquito. You're making you're making fun of a little kid. Yeah, or Enrique. or illo like cigarillo like small. Right, cigar. right, right, right. Yeah. And they have a. They were like, because of that, the word mosquito implies that there must be some <laughs> much larger creature, El Mosco, with like a six foot needle. <laughs> and then somebody put in my comments, they did the same thing. They were like, the fact that Ito and the suffix means that there's something much larger than Sumito, <laughs> El Sumo, somewhere out in the wild. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, one from right, the road. Yeah, but that's that's the UK. Hit the hit have the a fro- go, you mug. I feel like that's one I've heard before. Have a go. Ah, uh, it's like yeah. you try something, right? Have a go at yeah a concert. Have a go at YouTube. I think so. Yeah. Gone walk about. Yeah, it means to go like um, into the outback or into the country. This goes oh, another piece leave. of language, much like the accent itself. Like what? When the paper's due in an hour and you got to submit. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> this guy was totally running out of steam at the end of this. Uh, my Twitch, that's a fucking meme in my Twitch chat because every single stream I'll get up four or five times to run to the bathroom. Mm. And, and people keep timing it like a speed run. They'll go, submit 46 seconds, 51 seconds, you're slacking. And they're just like, there's because, no way you're washing your hands. I'm like, listen, well, man, A, I have to save the it. frames, and B, what am I going to get myself sick? It's only me. You should throw on the Rocky theme or something in the background. Are, are you yeah, frame exactly. perfect where like the moment you flush, you're already like reaching your hands over? I've, I've got, yeah, I've got to the point where I can more or less time how long it takes to get a flush. So I can flush in the middle of my piss and it'll be just disappeared when I'm done. Oh shit. And flush I can be strats. back. In, yeah, I actually, man. I, Speed I, running. I did that. I did that in my casual playthroughs. So, you know, I'm, pretty cool. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing this Surely. new game plus where there's already piss in the toilet and I jumped up to flush. <laughs> Surely you can. <laughs> Like, if you can motion it so that you're kind of doing up your pants with just the use of the pelvic thrust, then you could yeah. already have your hands in the sink, and then you could lift your leg up to flush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean? actually play on, I play on the emulator category, so I actually configured my bathroom <laughs> to have a sink above my toilet. <laughs> Is that any time 100%, or do you sometimes only, you know, do like a half empty? Uh, well, I play the 100% oh, yeah, uh, yeah. He's emulator. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's just been, my category. I'm hoping something salt picks me up. Yeah, I've been doing this thing where I hold a dodgeball right up against my bathroom door, and if I throw it hard enough, I can clip right into the toilet, <laughs> so I can just piss while it's flushing. I haven't gotten to getting out of the toilet yet, but it's we're going to need some more RTA testing on that. The bathroom have, uh, number two is, is a lot more complicated. It's, it's, oh, it's yeah. re- a lot harder to speed run. I've been getting stuck on the washing your ass in the sink part. I hear it's faster, but I haven't gotten it down. Well, the annoying yet. part is I have to use a Japanese toilet because the text is faster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the in the number two percent category, that's that's going to save you twenty seconds over a run, dude. It's worth it. I had one of the podcast ideas I have written down is real life speed strats. And it's mm. just like basically life hacks, but like legitimate ones that actually save you time through your day. Mm. Um, it would take drop a at, lot of planning, but I feel like it drop out of college faster so that you can start paying your debt. Sooner. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. <laughs> God damn, ba- bathroom speed running should that could legitimately become a, well, a proper sport. Can I can I get either of you for your Twitch stream to start uh, pencil sharpening speed runs? What get like um, uh, there's a there's a cop. It's a category. Right? It's, it's a, a category. If you look mm. it up on speedrums.com, you can sharpen pencils. IRL. There's an IRL category. What's what's the ending time? It's where you get to the fine point or you sharpen it down to the metal? It's 10 pencils. You have to sharpen it down to the metal. Oh, that just sounds like pain. Mm. Yeah, and it's messy. Oh, it's very yeah. messy. Oh, you just I want to see the- I, I want to see the guidelines for that. I want to see whether or not I'm allowed to wear gloves or use gamer glue to increase my tackiness. <laughs> it's I think because there's a game where you could just sharpen pencils, and then someone thought it'd be funny to make an IRL category. It, yeah. What's the what's the standardized pencil? Because surely you could find one that's got softer wood, and over the course of ten pencils, you'd have a huge advantage. It's, it's almost definitely a Ticonderoga number two. No way they're letting you use anything other than the standard. I, I think it is a Ticonderoga number two. <laughs> yeah, uh, it has to be. I don't use anything but a Ticonderoga number two. What All you, you number threes out there? What are you doing? What if you <laughs> use something like a tungsten blade so that it was like a lot less flexible yeah. and uh you know wouldn't wear down as quickly well That's it can't what... be an electrical pencil sharpener it has to be one of those turn ones in your hand right it can't be a mechanical pencil sharpener. can it be customized I... manual though like what do you like yeah like so so you a, take like out your crank you, you, yeah you unscrew the steel blade that's there and then you put in like a brand new diamond i think it blade. has to be hand powered turns where you just have to well no but rotate if you, you, your hand a you can change the blade but b it almost definitely be faster for you to turn the blade if you just have yeah. a small square pencil sharpener like you wouldn't be turning the pencil you'd just be quickly spinning the blade no, around the end that's of it. that's where you're completely wrong yeah i would have you gotta turn, turn the both pencil. at the same time oh no. yeah of course oh, you do yeah course. it's like a you gotta like do like a, a ratchet action yeah like a pepper oh, shaker 
Yeah. You've been you've been speed running pencils since what, like 2017? What's your best time at this point? I was a pioneer. Uh, <laughs> 1506. Jesus. <laughs> God damn. 15, 15 minutes for 10 pencils? Can you look up what the actual record is? Uh, let's dog. take a look at it. Fuck it. Pencil, sharpening, speed run. IRL drill? <laughs> There is a drill category. Speedrun.com. No, this is Pencil Sharpening Simulator. Hold on. I have to type no, it in. No, no, it is that. No, it is that one. You set your category select and then pick IRL. Oh, really? 40 yeah. minutes? Drillless percent. Oh, okay. no, drillless percent is what you're looking for. Drillless percent. Time, time for 10 pencils. 10 pencils, 11 minutes. Shit, that's pretty good. On PC, only from a month ago. Yo, this might be something we could do, Alex. I reckon we could beat that. <laughs> Hashtag content. Wait, what? Is, 420 pencils, one run from three years ago. Eight hours and nine minutes. That's copper. Christ, kind of that's, that's a platform, let's play. That's not even a speed run. PC. View rules. Timer starts when you press play and ends when you've sharpened 420 pencils without <laughs> using the drill. You must close out of the game to reset. No cheat engine. Video proof is required. Which means if I click this, I'll get the eight hour video, right? In theory. Holy shit. Oh, that's the game. That's Oh, this is the game. Yeah, I didn't see an IRL category. Oh, this is slow as horse cock, dude. <laughs> I wonder if they have a VR version of this game. <laughs> the things people do for glory. All right, anyway, we got to we got to wrap this up in one way or another. Internet oh. historian. Yes. You are known uh for your unbelievable knowledge of internet nuanced memes. You know your memes pretty well. Uh, sort of. I mostly yeah. defer to um, lessons in meme culture for that one. Yeah, that makes sense. That's mm. a that's a hardy fellow. Um, you okay. have, uh, we have a quiz in front of us here. What 2019 meme are you? Why is it only yeah, 2019? It's no, it's so. Luke Cage. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, so they're going to determine what 2019 meme you are based mm -hmm. on which one of these things you pick. First of all, off the top of your head, if you had to reckon, describe yourself as a 2019 meme, which one do you think you'd be? Uh, the hit or miss girl. There you go. Oh, that's there you go. One. The hit or miss girl. Fingers crossed you get it, but we're going to take a run through. Time to suit up and pick a favorite superhero show. Luke Cage, Arrow, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Flash. Why are there so many? Legends of Tomorrow say, and Smallville. I, I ran through this as a little test. None of these questions directly link to anything meme related. They're all like just random pop culture stuff. And am, somehow a meme comes out. I haven't seen any of them, and I only know that three of them exist. <laughs> All right, so, which one do you, what's which your favorite you know? out of these six that you haven't I seen? I suppose Smallville. Smallville. Smallville was good. Uh, next, mystery thriller show, The Suspense is... Oh, shut the fuck up. Stranger Things, Mindhunter, Black Mirror, The Handmaiden's Tale, American Horror Story, and Dark. Uh, it's not Mindhunter. I, I can't bring myself to watch that show because it's just like... I can't stop saying... My, it, there's two words. Mindhunter... And that yeah. new game that's come out, Banner Lord. Like, they're just such terrible name. Mind Hunter. What does he do? He hunts mind. He's, it's just, he's hunting your mind. It's bro. excruciating. It sticks banners. in my head and it just goes around and around and around all day. I walk around the house. Like, seriously, I bother, <laughs> I bother her story and I just go, Mind Hunter. Mind Hunter. She just started watching season one. Um. Wait, uh, what's your issue with Banner Lord? The same thing? It's just it's, goofy it's, sounding? It's, yeah, it just it's sounds... It's two words. It sounds stupid. Banner Lord. Banner Lord. Banner it Lord. So it sounds like something out of Game of Thrones. Once you start saying it, you just can't stop saying it. I, I, was, I was going for like 10 minutes in a stream the other day. Just Banner <laughs> Lord. Anyway, um, the, uh, the correct answer, though, is uh, probably Black Mirror. Or Dark. Dark was good in the first season, shit in season two. Black Mirror has also been a bit inconsistent, so which one do you think's your... Oh, I would debate that, but that's a different time. It's Stranger Things. Str <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, action series, Punisher, Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan, Altered Carbon, Westworld, Supernatural, or Daredevil? Bannerlord. <laughs> Bannerlord. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I have not seen any of these but i have heard of westworld so we'll go with that one shabams westworld how many mother fuck alex there's like 15 oh wait no there's only like eight more maybe uh yeah, we'll speed run up. it all right uh ready for a laugh the office parks and rec big bang theory sunny how i met your mother brooklyn 99 uh 
office. <laughs> Speed run. Office. Uh, I said in the last um, interview uh, that I saw this. I saw this meme that said, "If you've taken a personality quiz to see which office character you are, and you get Michael, but you take it over and over again until you get Jim, you're no. definitely a Michael." <laughs> <laughs> and somebody put in the comments, if you take that same quiz and you get Michael and you just accept that, does that make you a Dwight? <laughs> I was like, holy <laughs> fuck, this goes on for so long. <laughs> Cartoons, South Park, Big Mouth, Bob's Burgers, Rick and Morty, The Simpsons, and SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, what be, but are these contemporary? Like, if it's contemporary, then it's Rick and Morty. If it's, if it's like old... If it's old Simpsons, then it's Simpsons 100%. You, I think you have to assume that it's uh, before before season six of Simpsons and before season five of SpongeBob, yeah. I think that's the only way you can accept this question. Yeah, it's 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 season maybe seven or eight of The Simpsons, I think. Right, b before the, the Seymour episode, right? We've all seen that Entertain the Elk video, right? I'll link it in the description. Yeah, although I like that episode of The Simpsons, too. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was all right. What was his name? Armin Tanzerian? Armin Tanzerian, yeah. <laughs> They're like, you don't know Seymour. That was a good video, though. I like watching those videos. The Day the Simpsons Died is the video, mm. if you guys want to see it. Um, your answer is The Simpsons, then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to say, if you pick Big Mouth, I don't think we can be friends anymore. No. I don't like that show at all. No. If Archer was no on there, I would have picked Archer. Oh, what? Archer. If Archer, Archer or Futurama was on here, that'd be my pick right away. Yeah. Season uh, They're not cartoons. One two, they're Archer. anime. Yeah, seasons one or two of Archer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist animes, by the way. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Airbender, Dragon Ball Super for some reason, My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, or Pokemans. Oh, I gotta be boring. Pokemans. There My you go. favorite. The only reason I picked this quiz, by the way, is because they called Avatar an anime, and I just found that endlessly funny. What would you call it? Mm. A cartoon. Ah, interesting. Uh, reality TV show, Bachelorette, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, The Voice, Shark Tank, Hell's Kitchen, or Dancing with the Stars. Is this like I don't a, think I've watched any of this. You've watched uh, Hell, Shark Hell's, Tank. Hell's Kitchen's the only one that's tolerable. Hell's Kitchen. No, Sh Shark Tank is interesting. If you, oh, if you can die, yeah, I, that can be okay, yeah. I prefer it, The Dragon's Den. Uh, <laughs> I don't mean to be dramatic, but we really need you to pick a drama. Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, Sopranos, Grey's Anatomy, Riverdale, God damn, and Lost. Breaking Bad. 100%. Breaking Bad. I picked Lost. Uh, no, you Friends. didn't. I did when I took it. I haven't seen it. What the fuck, dude? Nothing happens in that fight. All they do is spin the whole... <laughs> right, right. Here's, here's Lost. Give it to us. Give it to S us. Give it to us. Season one. Mystery, mystery. Oh, my God. How can it happen? Oh, character development. Interesting, interesting. Season two. Wait, hold on. None of this makes any fucking sense. Mystery, mystery, <laughs> mystery. Season Polar three. Bear. Season three. It just goes completely off the rails, and they have no idea what to do. And then they just start hitting each other over the head, and they go... You're unconscious now. Let me drag you to the other side of the island. No, you're unconscious now. Let me drag you to the other side of the island. And then they proceed to do that for the next four seasons. And then a special at the end where they go, ah, uh, something back in time. And then they go, oh, it was all an allegory for something. Maybe they were dead. I don't know. And then, and then it ends. It was my favorite. A my favorite moment time. in the show was when they finally get off the island the first time. And it's the end of the season. You have Jack just crying to Kate or whatever. And he goes, <laughs> we, we have to go back, back, Kate. We have to go back to the island. <laughs> I just lost it. <laughs> that was a good Ooh. meme. Have you seen that one of like the fat Jack? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fat Jack is going to give you some weird stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kate, we have, Kate to we have to go back. <laughs> All right, favorite 90s Seinfeld. sitcom. Seinfeld. Uh, there you go. That's what I hate when they... <laughs> you are woman yelling at cat. I I'll feel like it. this was us just now when I said I liked Lost. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, if you're, not, if you're not appreciating... Oh, maybe this might be something I need to buy. <laughs> no, nah, maybe not. That looks awful. <laughs> God, what a meme. Dang. What a meme. I can live with that. That's have you have, have you seen this cat, by the way? It's a gorgeous fucking cat outside of the context of this meme. Uh, that cat very looks like a streamer girl. Like, oh. Yeah, man. <laughs> Hit or miss. <laughs> this, is the this is the streamer cat that throws its owner over its shoulder. 
Uh, you tend to be a little extra sometimes, and most people just don't get it. Or maybe you're so calm that it drives other people a little nuts. We'll never know what's really going on. I think that's a good encompassing description of this podcast. What did we even do today? I don't know. I, yeah, I can't remember any of it. Who are you? Uh, I'm Alex, the co-host of this show. I'm Sumito. Sign us off here, Sumit. Uh, Bye, guys. Nope, it's a bit more than that. <laughs> and I'll use my signature catchphrase, Spies. <laughs> well played, Sumito. Spotify links in the description. Thank you, Thanks for making it to the end. Catch you on the next one. Thanks for joining us, Internet Historian. Who? Does uh, anyone here have a Twitch? <laughs> I'm leaving. Thanks for sticking around. Bye. Spies. Spies. Uh, Spies. Cool.